Hello everybody and welcome to Fugu Frenzy! We are actually starting it now, it's unbelievable! Um, we are currently in practice, of course, hopefully you can hear me and uh, all is well and good. Woo, yes, applause! Um, but uh, this is split one, we have four splits tonight, so it should be good fun. We did do qualifying last weekend, it was Saturday evening and also Sunday morning. Now, without further ado, actually, in fact, I will jump to that in just a moment. You can see people practicing their starts at the moment, so let's just talk about that first of all. We have a 23 lap race coming up, 23 laps. It's a grid start with the false start check, so, you know, there is some skill to this start. Um, we're currently on our pulse to Jomas, who came out of nowhere, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And it should be a good little fun race. Now, split one, believe it or not, is actually the one with the biggest time gap in qualifying. The biggest time gap. Uh, the other splits are so close. We're talking two temps covering the entire field, uh, including some times which are exactly the same. Now, obviously we're at Blue Moon in Field A. You can read that at the bottom. I don't need to repeat that. So obviously this is going to have some close racing. Slipstream helps a little bit, but it's not major. And in qualifying, you weren't allowed to use Slipstream. So they really had to go for it. <laughs> Blake, thank you so much for that. I've not got alerts on on this screen. That's the one thing I've actually forgotten. So thank you so much, my friend. Um, let's get these Fugus frenzying. Exactly. So uh, we'll go through some of the liveries first of all. We do. We always did this with the Mini Madness. So you can see Jomas in the Lazarus livery there, representing Team Lazarus there. Um, let's jump to Elias, who's in the uh, Pennzoil livery there, the yellow. We'll be able to spot that a mile away. Let's now jump to... Um, Sushia, and that's a Falcon livery there, so we've got some quite old school liveries coming up here. As so we jump to uh, my team Jizz there, and uh, oh, what a lovely colour, oh, that is a very nice colour that. Look, check that out. Unbelievable colour. As we then jump to Ryan, pink, we'll be able to spot that a mile away. Fluorescent pink there, and uh, Jamas is reporting some issues, hopefully he's uh, okay. Let's now jump to uh, our clerk. Have a little look at this livery. Let's see what we come around. We are going to jump to the race fairly quickly, but we do have some uh, features during the stream, which uh, hopefully you'll enjoy. Blue and black livery there of our clerk. We then have... Oh, I've missed uh, Lost Shelty there. I'll jump up to that. Hansu Legend, thank you so much, my friend. Good luck to all the racers. Yes, enjoy the race as well. Obviously, you saw some of these liveries in the actual intro. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's jump to Lost Shelty. We did just miss that. We get the perfect camera for Lost Shelty, of course. As uh, we then jump to Tessie Smith. So we have 14 drivers in this split. And there's 14 drivers in every split as well, for those wondering. So uh, hopefully we'll have a better look at this livery as uh, we get a better camera shot, hopefully. Now, some of the rounds that we've got in the future, we've got uh, six rounds total for the season, which are spread over a m over six months, basically. So, one this round, one next round, and we keep going forward um, as such. There we go, we get a good glimpse of that. So, um, hopefully we haven't missed anybody so far in terms of the route. We've got Dave there, we've got the rainbow on the side. Uh, I'm not sure what that says on the front there. Apple. Apple, we've got an Apple car. Um, let's now go to uh, P11, which is Mattman. Smells like a fish market. <laughs> oh dear. Now it's hard to get any, like any amount of liveries in the uh, intro. I tried my hardest to get as many in as I possibly could. Um, dark brown here. Now the grid has already been set, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's see dark brown coming round. Now if I have missed a livery, I do apologise, but we will see it in the race. It will be an exciting race. We got to TLE there. And then, oh, B Racing 1's just actually jumped. Ah, oh, there we go. B Racing 1 here in a very orange livery as well. So, obviously, from the Netherlands, orange, it represents. Now, before we jump into the race, how did qualifying go? Well, let me uh, talk you through qualifying right now. Qualifying at Blue Moon Bay in Field A then had 74 drivers completing qualifying across 15 qualifying sessions which happened both on the Saturday evening and the Sunday morning to incorporate everybody's time schedule across the globe. And it truly was a global experience. Let's have a look at what happened and how the top 10 was created and came forward uh, before we actually have a look at all the qualifying results which determined which drivers were racing in which split and which drivers unfortunately didn't quite make the cut for round one. 
So we start off in session number one, and Sushia was the first of the pacemakers here. It's very first flying lap, went straight out there and did a 116. So very quick, straight off the mark there. Uh, but there was somebody even faster in this lobby as we jump to Jizz, who was on an absolute mission here. Second flying lap, they only get two flying laps, remember, comes in with a 116.3. Very early, very fast pace. Uh, from very early on. We then went to session number two where Doc Brown um, was on a bit of a flyer here. Uh, got a 16 straight off the bat but then went on to improve once again with a further 16 lap. 16 is what everybody was looking for in order to get into the top split. We went to Elias Anderson now. Uh, came in with a 16-4. Actually went on to get another 16-4. You can see one, well, just over one tenth there um, through the last sector as we head towards the line. It's just a slight improvement here on that 116.4, uh, but even so, it doesn't really change any positions at all for now. We then move on to Rapid GT, who in session number six was absolutely flying as well. Head straight towards the line here uh, and gets a very quick lap, very early on 116.7. The very first flying lap there counts for rapid, didn't improve on the second lap. Uh, we then jump to TLE in session number uh, eight here now. And TLE was the early pace setter here, 16.9 there, straight off the bat. But LZR Jamas on the second lap, nearly three tenths up and somehow nailed this corner beautifully. It's why we're not fast forwarding it. Because as you'll see in a second, when he heads towards this line, this is an unbelievable end to a lap. Only three tenths up on that 16.9. So that's a 16.6. However, heading towards that line, Jomas about to get a 16.2. Unbelievable speed there from Jomas. Very much a surprise. No practice there for Jomas as well. So uh, no practice pays off apparently. Uh, Lost Shelter came in the following day on the Sunday in session number 10. Uh, and got an early lap in there of a 16.9. Which is all good and dusted there. Uh, and then at the very next session, session 11. We had Smith in here. Comes across the line here with a very, very quick 16.6 there. Uh, followed then by Dave. Straight off the bat there. Two fast flying laps here from both Smith and Dave. As Dave heads towards the line here now. Uh, what kind of lap time is going to be? Of course, we're covering the top 10. So we know it's a 16. But whereabouts is it going to put Dave? It's a 16.9. Now, let's actually jump back to the circuit now. And we'll have a look at the actual Full list of qualifying positions. There you go. Jamas leads away by attempt from Jizz. Elias is in there as well. Uh, we have the top 10 drives. You've just seen in that footage right there. Now we are going to go through a fair few players here. As I said, there's 74 players who qualified. Uh, as we jump now to the second set of 10. And look how close qualifying is there. One and a half attempts covers 10 positions there. And Scourge missed out on top split by a 1,000th. One thousandth of a second missed out on top split. As we continue on now, 21st to 30 here. Again, another tenth just covers a whole load of drivers. Every, every second counted. Every millisecond, every thousandth counted here in terms of qualifying. As we jump to place 33 and place 34 there, a tied time. Then we had the same with W1 and Monte in 36 and 37. We had three tied times in the end across the board here in terms of qualifying. Positions 41 to 50 now, so we're getting towards the end, uh, the back end of the grid. Remember, only 56 racers can race in this race. Uh, and you can see one and a half seconds there from P44 down to P50. So you can see it was very, very tight indeed, as we see... Um, Hoss Knight there, 56 racers, sorry, if I said 54 before, apologies. Uh, 56 racers qualify for this one. You can see Hoss Knight is the last of the qualifiers. The Secure Shark, first of the reserve. So anybody below Shark then are a reserve driver. So essentially, if anybody misses out or can't make the race suddenly, drivers move up the grid accordingly. Um, so potentially, if someone doesn't turn up for split one, Scourge could eventually get in with that being 1,000th off there into split one. But obviously, we'll start at the back of the grid. These are the grid positions, of course, as well for qualifying. There you have the 74 drivers that qualified for round one of Fugu Frenzy. A very intense qualifying. You saw how close it was there in terms of qualifying positions. Thank you to every single driver who competed in qualifying. Let's now jump to the lobby. Let's have a look at what's going on and let's get ready for some racing action. Welcome back then. Good qualifying session that. 
pretty unbelievable. We are about to start the race now. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get racing here. And before we do, there's one little sneaky little trick I've got to show you. So I hope you're all prepared for this. Um, and let's get ready for some racing. So your split one at grid walk is here then. LCR Jamas, you know he's on pole with Jizz on P2 there. On row two, we have Elias and Smith. Row three, Sushia 19 and Rapid GT. Row four is Dot Brown and TLE with row five being Dave and Lost Shelty. Row six is Ryan and Mattman. And finally, rounding out your first grid, it's B Racing 1 and R Clock on row seven in this split one race. Fancy indeed. It was fancy. What can I say? <laughs> Damn. But here we go with the race. Let's get ready for some fantastic action here. As you can see the grid all lined up. We just saw the grid. As uh, we get ready for the racing now. If there's any grid problems, we are going to sort them out. So if two cars get stuck, there is a restart. So let's get ready. Here we go. Remember, false start check is on. 23 laps here in Fugu Frenzy. In the Grady Fugu Z. As we get ready for the race now. We can hear the engines revving up. And off we go. It looks like a very clean start there by Jamas. What a wheel spin there by Sushi. is actually gained a few positions. It might have been Smith there dropping down a little bit there. Side by side further back. Three wide potentially in that ninth place position. Coming into turn one. Very tricky corner turn one. In we go. And all oh, seems fine and dandy. Through we go as we're on Lost Shelty at the moment. As uh, Jamas looks like he's leading away that P2 there. For Elias. The Jizz has had a bad start there. In there, P... Well, it was P2, he's down to P3, potentially P4. No, keeps that position for now as we come towards the right-hander. Line of stern now, through there we go. And we begin here with this racing. 23 laps here, remember, in these Grady Fuguzis. Anything can happen in terms of settings. I will discuss them shortly with you. Then you can get an idea. Oh, we've got a move there by Ryan into the hairpin. What a move that was. Um, we might have another sneaky little replay of that shortly. But round we go. And you can see, oh, Matman has got run a little bit wide there. But uh, Ryan making his way up the field there. And Jizz has actually gone back up into P2. It's side by side here with Elias into the left-hander. This is never good side by side. They somehow make it work. Through they go. Jamis is breaking away. Jizz is in the, to the wall. And Elias is going down the inside. So she is going to come into the mix here with Dot Brown as well. Dot Brown on the inside of Sushia. And Elias at P2, just P3, and it's going to be three wide as we head towards the start-finish line and begin lap number two. We have 23 laps of this, folks. So, as I said in the tweets, grab, I hope you've got your popcorn and a drink because it's going to be a busy one. As we head towards turn one, Smith tries to go down the inside here. In to the breaking zone, we go on the inside. Lovely little move by Smith there. Is he going to get the move done into P5? He goes potentially P4 through there, and Elias still leading that little pack as Jamis is breaking away at this moment in time. As it all starts to settle down the line is turning through the left with rapid on the inside of dot brown just uh, pulled out of that a little bit into the right hander they go and dot brown gets that p6 ryan making his way up the field here gets a little bit of oversteer there huge moment for ryan there in p8 let's jump to the front of this battle though into the hairpin we go and it's still elias from just just on the inside just there of elias as they go through the hairpin absolutely nose to tail here absolutely brilliant stuff a <laughs> brief titch brief <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've got water. Don't worry about that as we continue with the racing now. And it literally side-by-side -side action as expected through this field as Elias is now breaking away with Jizz in P3. Sushi at P4, Smith P5 and Rapid GT on the inside of Dot Brown there. In at P6, P7. Battle here for P6. Ryan could get involved as well if they stay side by side. Rapid's not going to have to slipstream here. Dot Brown's going to have a little bit. You can just see that having an impact there. So they head towards the start finish line to start lap number three now. And Rapid going to pull in potentially. I'm not too sure. Ryan's really closing up the gap. Goes for the move down the inside. Is Ryan going to get this done? He does indeed. What a move by Ryan there. Ryan really making ground in this race. We saw that in the past community championship though with Mini Madness. Ryan does make his way. His qualifying is not his strength. It's the race apparently as he's all over the back of Dot Brown now. As uh, we can breathe a little bit now. Line of Stern up towards the right hander. Elias leading that huge train of cars and uh, it, no one's breaking away apart from Jamas at the moment with a 1.8 second gap. That is broken away or a breakaway from the slipstream should I say as they head towards the hairpin. Looks like Elias ran a little bit deep there as they come out of that corner now. Look how close this is. Unbelievable stuff. Sashia up to P3. So Sashia making some moves here as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff from these drivers so far. 
brilliant racing, side-by-side -side racing, which is either what we see. And Ryan is up to P6 now. Up to P6. Hopefully we can have a look at that move at some point. But Ryan has been making his way all the way through this field. In fact, I'm going to have a quick gander. Where did Ryan start again? P11. P11 to P6 by lap three. Absolutely superb driving here uh, in the pink machine there. As uh, we look further up, uh, Tsushia under sort of pressure from Jizz, but we're going to have the slipstream of Elias, so potentially going to keep that position. We'll keep an eye on that, heading towards turn number one. Into the left hander we go, and it is Linus Stern there. Linus Stern further back as well. A little bit of sketchy there by Ryan. Let's see if we can have a look at Ryan's move um, from before. So, Ryan into the hairpin. You just see that there. Did send it a little bit. It looked like Dot Brown did see it come in. So, got the move done. It looked fairly clean. Uh, we will talk about penalties and such in this race. There are penalties as we jump to Jomas here. So, in terms of penalties, a driver can report another driver. And what will happen is... Oh, well, speak it, let's forget about that for a second. Jizz has just gone down the inside of Tsuchiya there to try and get P3... But Sushi is going to have the inside then for the double apex hairpin here, the left hander, and keeps that position for now. Brilliant racing from these folks. Absolutely fantastic. And it's Linus Stern further back. Let's just talk about the penalty system a bit more. So if a driver feels that another driver is just misbehaving completely, they will they can put in a request to be investigated. Um, but what that happens is the investigate uh, the, the people investigated is the reporter and the reportee. And we do this for fairness because as we saw last season, occasionally it's one of the reportsmen, but actually it's their bad driving and not the driver who they're reporting is bad driving. So we do both, and then there's a penalty system in play. If you want more information about that, please check the description below. Cheers just runs a bit wide there at turn one. Just kept it, keeps it out of the barrier there. Smith under all sorts of pressure from Ryan now. Ryan's still trying to make progress through this field. Site P11. And it looks like going to be giving Smith a lot of trouble here. So heads towards the right-hander. Smith runs a little bit wide there. Ryan on the outside into here. Surely not around the outside. That would be impressive. Oh, a little bit of OC there. But Smith keeps that position for now. We'll see what Ryan can do as we head towards the hairpin. <laughs> yeah, I realised the amount of jokes coming in there. As Ryan looks down the inside again as Smith... Oh my word, what a move by Ryan. The superb driving. But Smith trying to keep it on the outside here. Going to have the inside for the double apex to happen. Into the left hander we go. No, he doesn't. Ryan gets another position. What a move by Ryan. Ryan is showing some superb overtakes and driving here. As uh, we continue on now towards this left hander. And everyone in your picture right there. We'll just have a look who is uh, the car at the far back. B Racing 1 not had a good start here. 10 seconds behind Matman. A lot of work to do. But with the amount of battles happening and the length of the race potentially could come into play. Remember, Slipstream's not critical here. But it does help a little bit, like two temps or so. We'll jump back to Ryan. Ryan is a second behind Jizz now. So we'll see if that gap starts to close. They're all breaking, having a little gap between each other now. Smith very close to Ryan there. Uh, but you can see that... It's P2 to P11. Anyone makes a mistake here, they're dropping to P11, P12 sort of area. Uh, Ryan with a... Uh, well, Ryan's got 15.8. A 15.8, folks. He's really pushing on here. That shows you the impact of Slipstream. It is... Is a little bit... Uh, you know, it, it will increase fast lap times. I can't get my words out now. It just, just stunned me with that time of 15.8. Uh, Dot Brown putting uh, Smith under all sorts of pressure here. Heading towards the right-hander. And going to get it nailed. Who's that further behind? Rapid looking on the inside of Smith as well. Doesn't quite get it done there as they leave that hairpin. And uh, Rapid still on the outside of Smith there. Let's jump to that battle here. Smith on the inside of the hairpin. Rapid trying to go around the outside. Oh, Rapid looks like Rapid could get this done. Potentially Smith gets a little bit of overstay. Going to lose that position to Rapid. What's a move by Rapid? Round the outside. How about that? Unbelievable stuff there from Rapid. Oh, very close to the barrier. Could be under all sorts of pressure there from Smith because I think he is a little bit compromised. As uh, we'll jump to the uh, lead in a second, but we've got Rapid Smith, TLE's getting involved now as they head towards the start finish line. So Rapid's going to be under all sorts of pressure here, lost the momentum out of that last corner. Smith looks towards the inside. Uh, Slipstream at this point isn't as impactful as they head towards turn number one. Smith down the inside of Rapid. Oh, nearly gets it stopped. Round they go. Superb racing. Smith gets it done. TLE now trying to look for the cut back there on Rapid. Gets down the inside. It's going to actually nail this because it's a left-hander coming up. Oh, superb racing from these three individuals. Through there you go. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. That is the top six at Slipstream just for now. But any battling can happen here. 
but superb racing from these folks. Now, let's actually have a look. Let's just make sure anyone going for a move here. TLE looking down the inside. A uh, little bit of contact there. A little bit of Constantina effect happening there. All right, let's have a look at that lead gap. 1.6 seconds now. That gap is coming down. It was 1.8 earlier on. Now 1.5. So potentially we're going to have a battle for the lead here. As through the left hander they go. Jomas, Elias, Sushia, and Jiz there as first to fourth. Ryan. Um, not really closing that gap too much. Is in the slipstream still. Doc Brown just got the slipstream of Ryan. And Smith is just outside of Doc Brown's slipstream as they head towards the start-finish line to start lap number eight. If you do have any questions regarding this championship, do get them in the comments uh, in the chat and I will be happy to answer them for you or well, somebody else might be able to answer them for you as well I did uh, talk about I see a question about tires and I will talk about that now so the tires they're using are the intermediate tires you're probably going why intermediate it just feels nice on these cars feels really nice so why not use them feels nice happy days Question, when is the next Mini Madness? Well, that's the meme of the channel, I guess. Oh, Sushi, I guess. A little bit of overstay there. Leaving that right hand out. He's going to have all sorts of pressure from Jiz here. And uh, Jiz going to try and go around the outside at the hairpin. That's not going to be the best bet. Oh, -ho -ho! wow. Lots of overstay into that corner. We got. They don't have to worry about tire wear or fuel. So that is completely out the window. It is literally a sprint race. So uh, Jiz down the inside there. And <laughs> gets it done. Oh, couldn't have been any other name. Couldn't have been any other name, could it? Uh, but we continue on uh, all the same. I think Smith might be in Doc Brown's Oh, a little bit of contact there with the barrier. Jizz makes a huge error there at the left hand. They hit the barrier, then hit the outside as well. Going to be under all sorts of pressure from Ryan now as well. Ryan's easily going to get this done, I'm sure. Uh, Ryan goes to the outside now. Oh, very smart move there. Gets into the slipstream. Gets the move done up into P4. <laughs> I'm a hot madness. Uh, but gets it done as we continue now towards turn number one to Ryan. P11 to P4 now. The mover of the day so far. But we've got lots of racing action still to come here. <laughs> Giz. We could call it Giz instead. Giz. Okay, we'll go Giz. Um, but uh, even so, let's have a look a bit further back. There seems to be a lot of action further back. Dave's was side by side with somebody then. Uh, let's try and find it. There we go. Rapid. Rapid's dropped down a little bit here. Not sure what's happened to Rapid. Under all sorts of pressure from Dave here. Dave looking to be on the outside. Not going to quite work there. Rapid's going to be a bit compromised on the right hander though. Through there they go. Uh, and continue now towards a hairpin. Who is behind uh, Dave? It is R. Clark. R. Clark potentially looking for a move there. Is looking for a move. Dave goes very defensive there. Manages to stop it just a little, maybe a little bit of contact there with Rapid. Rapid might not be too happy with that. We'll see what happens though. And Dave looking to try and go around the outside of Rapid now into the hairpin. Not going to quite work there. Turning a little bit too early. Rapid going to keep that position for now. And R. Clark trying to get the move done on Dave now. Going to be side by side into the left hander. R. Clark going to get the move done there. Superb driving. Gets the move done through they go and that gives rapid a little bit of breathing space as well with that move so we look at ryan who's got giz all over his trumpet now god oh, i don't know why i just said that i don't know why i just said that it does yeah you're quite right but giz going down the inside of ryan into the turn at number one numero uno on the inside, Ryan's going to have a bit more momentum through the corner though, it's just the way the corner works, going to hit the banking, that's going to help him round, and does indeed, Ryan keeps that P4 for now <laughs> I know, well I just pronounce it the other way, I'm going to say Giz from now on though, it's fine, don't worry about it has, uh, let's have a look at the gap now. So Elias is in Jomas' slipstream. It could get a bit heated later on. Elias in at Jomas' slipstream as they head towards the hairpin. Let's jump to that battle for P4 with Giz and Dot Brown in there now. Three-way battle for this position. And uh, very close indeed here. Lap number 10. We're already halfway through this race, basically. What on earth's happened there? That's gone very, very quick. In fact, let's jump a little bit further back. We've got TLE, Smith, Lost Shelty. They're all fighting for this position as well. P7 on the cards for these drivers. Now, each, by the way, the point system, for those that aren't aware, is uh, done so that the bottom three positions merge with the top three positions of the lower split. It gives people the opportunity to potentially progress or beat somebody in a higher split, but at a reasonable level. So if you're interested in that, again, in the description, check out the uh, full PDF there. 
<laughs> Tid just brought this on himself. I have brought it on myself. I realise that. I, I, I do realise that. Let's jump further back as Giz has actually got the position from Ryan. We'll see if we can get a, an action replay of that. But Giz has got the uh, move done for now. Ryan looking to try and get the move done again into the left hander. Not going to quite work there. As uh, we'll try and have a look at the move at some point. Depending on whether Ryan's going to go for the move here. Giz having to go a little bit defensive. Pulls back onto the racing line. And line of stern. Through they go. And all happy days there. Let's see if we can have a look at the move at the time. So it was already done and dusted actually there. So Ryan stuck behind Giz at the moment. And uh, not going to get the move done into turn number one. So Jamas now one second ahead of Elias. That gap is closing and closing quite rapidly now. So a couple of attempts per lap. And uh, basically it's going to be the top six. Maybe in this fight with Jamas. Jamas has had a bit of breathing room. Now in a potential fight here for the lead. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Dot Brown is in that slipstream of Ryan and Giz there as well. So further back, still Smith, TLE, Lost Shelty. They're all line of stern and fighting very closely here. Through the left hander, they go. And with Smith now having a bit of slipstream here, TLE could go for the move. You can just see the closing distance there happening. TLE pulling alongside here as they head towards the line. You can see that it's just not enough with the slipstream there as well as they head towards turn number one. Who's going to get the position here? TLE down the inside. Is he going to get the break in all right? He does indeed. Oh, a little bit deep. And that's going to bring Smith and potentially Lost Shelty into the mix. Give me a better camera, please, director. And Smith is still ahead just from TLE. Wow, how close are they? You can chuck a rug over those and uh, they'll all fit under it. As uh, they continue now towards the right-hander. And uh, further back there, we've got Rapid, who has... Who is that all over his trumpet? It's R. Clark, two temps back. And uh, they're very close as well as they head towards the hairpin. Everyone's heading towards the hairpin, actually. Uh, I want that camera angle, please. As we just look at TLE having a little bit of a move there. Ryan also went a little bit deep there. Uh, not Ryan, sorry, Rapid. Ryan's further up the field. What am I on about? As we continue down towards the left-hander. As uh, that's all calming down a little bit. It's certainly not calming down for this seventh position. Smith, TLE, Lost Shelty. That's the closest battle on track at the moment. As uh, we continue on, Ryan is in front of Giz again. Yeah, I believe something must have happened somewhere on the lap because there's a big gap suddenly between third and fourth position. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened there, but uh, I'll see if I can catch replay of it. But uh, even so, we're looking at this battle at the moment. P number seven, Swift, TLE, Lost Shelty. Anyone making a move into turn one? Not quite at the moment. Uh, you can see how the break in. Oh, TLE looking on the inside. Not going to quite work there. Had a bit of a better break in um, into that one. Now we've got Jomas and Elias there, line of stern. Through there they go. Jomas just keeps it fine so far. A little bit of a drift there. We'll see if we can see what happened to Ryan and Giz. Nope, they've already broken away at that point. Already a big gap there, so we cannot see that. Let's jump to the lead battle now. Jomas and Elias. So this is your battle for P number one. The maximum points on offer today is here. It is now. Who is going to get the victory? They have 10 laps of fighting here. Is Antimix Elias? Yes, is the answer. Martin Greddy. Yes, I've heard that one before now as well. As we come through the left-hander there. So, the minute these start battling, um, Sushia potentially will get in the mix as well. And then it could lead into further battles all the way back to P6. Brown. I think Smith, TLE, uh, are a bit too far away there. So, it could be a six-way battle towards the end of this race. We'll have to wait and see, of course. Uh, Elias, at the moment, not looking to make the move at the moment in towards turn one we go and everybody surviving for now there's Sushia Ryan is in the slipstream as is Giz of Ryan's and Dot Brown in Giz's and then it's a four oh Dot Brown into the wall hard there very hard that's going to drop him out of that slipstream let's forget everything I just said there that's going to be a 1.5 second gap so uh, Dot Brown a lot of work to do there and then we've still got this battle here Smith TLE and Lost Shelty, they're so close together. In fact, Rapid, R. Clark and Matman could join this battle. We could have a six-way fight here. Oh, say that. TLE's just gone off. That's going to give Lost Shelty a bit of a run in towards the hairpin. TLE going to have dirt on his tyres as they head towards the hairpin here. And uh, is TLE going to be able to get the car stopped? Does just actually. Fair play. Fair play. Penalty there for R. Clark for cutting the course. That will drop off during the race. So there's nothing really to worry about there as they head towards the hairpin here. And that is a six-way scrap now for that P7 position. Let's jump to the lead battle now. Jomas and Elias. They are very close here still. Three tenths of a second. Yes, so we're getting all the jokes in with that one. As uh, we continue towards the start-finish line here. Jomas is two tenths ahead of Elias. 
as we start lap number 15 now of 23 and uh, not, life's not close enough to make a move just yet and Sushia actually losing out on time at the moment and uh, potentially gonna have Ryan all over his trumpet soon with Giz and Dot Brown we'll have to wait and see and uh, what's happened here because Smith's actually gone whoa something big's happened here rapid down the inside of Lost Shelty there as well let's see if we can have a look what's happened here um, oh, it's already happened, unfortunately. So Smith's broken away somehow. There must have been an accident at the barrier, potentially. Um, we haven't got the ability to go any further back than we currently have. But wrapped up to P8, lost out to P9, TLE P10, uh, Matman P11, and uh, who was in P12 there? That was R. Clark. Dave, a bit further back there, 3.6 seconds, and B Racing 1 still uh, 8.4. So it's down from 10, it's now down to 8.4. Going to struggle to get that down even more. Let's jump to that lead battle again. Four tenths of a second. Through the left hander we go. You can get so close to that barrier. It's kind of a critical corner to get right. We saw that in qualifying with Jomas, where he absolutely nailed it and the time just dropped. It absolutely did just drop as we head towards the start finish line now. And uh, Jomas trying to break the slipstream a little bit there. Potentially going to move to the race now. We just see a plane coming into land there. Really annoying these planes. As uh, we come in towards the left hander. Elias still not making the move at the moment. Maybe waiting. I'm not too sure. And uh, through we go. Ryan has got Giz all over the back of him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Just stop mentioning his name, okay? I'm going to stop. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, as we go through the left hand uh, and the right. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Peggy 18 right <laughs> right we continue on all the same Ryan under pressure here under pressure but does have some slipstream from Sushia up front <laughs> can you get slip off the jets no <laughs> oh dear right we've got a big battle here now P8 we've got P8 P12 but we have uh, Smith just up ahead slipstream not going to be in Rapid's favour here so Lost Shelty could be making moves further on as we just watch the battle through the left hander and on towards the oval of the circuit Lost Shelty all over Rapid's trumpet here as we took it into the left hander here and uh, it seems like they all get it right there through they go, some are just being a bit more careful than others We'll jump to that battle shortly. How close is Elias? Elias is a 10th. Is he going to make a move? Not quite yet, mate. I think Elias is waiting until the end here. I have a sneaky suspicion Elias is trying to play this smart uh, and waiting towards the end because Sushia potentially will come into play. Still a two-second gap there to Sushia, but Ryan and um, Giz is in there as well and Dot Brown a bit further back, of course. As uh, you see, Jomas is trying a bit deep here. It's going to be very close into the water. Right-hander, there you go. And uh, still no moves as of yet, let's jump to that battle for P8, Rapid GT, Lost Shelty, TLE all in there. It's a train at the moment, it is indeed. You can see the train of cars here as well as they come through that uh, right-hander and they're going to head towards the hairpin once again. Nobody looking to make moves at the moment. Oh, as I say that, our oh, Clark looked down the inside briefly there and it did scare that man a little bit, but that man pulls it back. So some dummies being played further back. And I think Rapid is in, yes, he is indeed in Smith's slipstream. So this could once again be a battle for P7. And this could be anybody's significant amount of points here on offer. In fact, let me have a look at those points for you. Um, where are my points? I've got them written down somewhere. Here we go. So P7 worth 92 points, P12 worth 82. So there's a 10 point difference there between those positions. Just plus two accordingly for all those positions. And uh, you get the result. Overall for the victory, there's 110 points on offer. Uh, second is 106 and third is 102. So third to fourth is a uh, four point difference as well. So third is critical over fourth place. So we probably will see a battle between Sushia, Ryan and Giz there as well. That gap still two seconds. Now 1.9. Oh, it's going up and down. So I don't know if they're going to work together here or not. Ryan says no as they head towards the hairpin here. Ryan wants to go for it. It down the inside of Sushia into the hairpin. Gets it stopped. What a move by Ryan there. Superb driving. Ryan up to P3 now from P11 on the grid. Superb racing as they all run extremely wide there. In towards the hairpin we go. And uh, ooh, it could be three wide. No, it's going to be two wide. Giz on the outside here. And Linus turn through there into the left hand. There we go. Gives with a little bit of brakes. 
Um, it's one corner you've got to be careful about braking with because it cannot make the car unstable. Dot Brown just grazes the wall there. Sushia runs a little bit wide. That's going to give Giz the inside. And Ryan's going to give him that slipstream. Moves over to the right now. Going to give it both of them. Always trying to make decisions. Who gets what here? And uh, Ryan are going to keep that position for now. But what's that doing towards the gap? They've lost a second. They have lost a second to Elias and Jomas there. So that's significant in terms of the race for the victory. As we look further back, Lost Shelty's got past Rapid GT during all of this as well. Smith lost Shelty. So Rapid's just lost one position for now. Uh, and the rest is still as it was. Uh, further back, uh, B Racing 1's got somebody to race with finally. B Racing 1 has overtaken Dave. Dave's had a bit of an issue somewhere. So uh, they can fight for P13 and P14. Still worth getting the extra places. So we jump to P7 now. Smith lost Shelty. Rapid GT. They're all in there. Yep, Ryan P11 up to P3 in top split. He's doing an absolutely sterling job there. And uh, Rap GT going defensive. In fact, attacking Lost Shelty, uh, I think, actually, in all of that. Rapid down the inside. Gets it job done. TLE trying to go for the move as well. And uh, is TLE going to get it done? I don't believe so. Lost Shelty keeps that position for now. So that's going to be P8, P9. They've got to be careful here because if they lose Smith, they're going to lose the slipstream and they're not battling them for P7. In towards the left-hander they go. And uh, everyone's still keeping it safe through that left-hander here. Jamas trying to break slipstream. Elias looking to make moves now as it's under attempt in towards turn one. Jamas had to go defensive here as we have basically four laps to go in towards the exit of turn one. Jamas is close to that barrier. Elias going to have the cutback here. Elias going to be on the inside for the left-hander. No, just pulls back there. Jamas keeps that position for now. Still, Jamas leads the way. Uh, it's been uh, from flag to flag at the moment. Is it going to be that all the way towards the end? We'll have to wait and see. As uh, further back, we've got Ryan, Giz and Shashia. has lost that position to Giz at some point. Uh, we'll see if we can have a quick look at that one, uh, if it was anywhere. And it was on turn one there, just on the exit. And uh, Giz gets that position there. So we just saw the end of that move. As you can see, all Z3 battling, and it's uh, still a three-second gap here. So, at the moment, the fight for the victory is between Jomas and Elias, but uh, we'll see what happens. If they start battling very hard, there's going to be issues, and the gap could easily close. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. This is going to be a running joke, isn't it, for the entire championship? So, one and a half temps here between Jomas and Elias as they head towards the start finish line. Jomas goes towards the left hand side. Elias closing and closing and closing. Goes towards the right hand side now. Is Elias going to try and go around the outside into turn one? Very risky move. Can it be done? Let's try and get the cut back. Jomas going to stop it on the apex there. Lovely bit of driving. Elias tries to get the nose in. And oh, it's side by side. I think Elias does have the nose in there. He does indeed. Pulls out of it for now. So we jump towards that P3. Ryan is pulling away just, I think, from uh, Giz and Sushia. So 2.9 seconds. They've got to be careful about fighting up ahead as Giz gets it all sorts of sideways. As Ryan goes off as well, that's going to cost them time with dirty tyres. Um, so I do think it's going to be a two-way battle for that victory. Let's jump to this battle uh, further up. So Smith still leading the way in that P7 position from Rapid. Lost Shell to TLE. Matt Man and our clock. That's still line of stern there. And then we've got a very close battle actually for P13 with B Racing 1 and Dave there at the back of the field. Both have had issues during this race, it looks like. But at least you get to race each other. That's all very well and good. Let's jump to that P3 battle as Giz has managed to get past Ryan in all of this. As uh, into the wards left hander and the oval begins. And it's going to be looking very close here. They've lost nearly another second. Another second. As uh, now they're going to be all sorts of slipstream here. Giz goes towards the right hand side. Oh, a little bit of barrier clash there with Ryan and Tushia. You have to be careful about doing that. That's going to be... Uh, Stewart's potential might look at that, to be honest with you. And uh, Stewart might not be happy, but we'll have to wait and see as they head towards turn one. Giz goes to the outside, Ryan down the inside here. They're side by side into turn one. Oh, it's so tight. So, so tight. As uh, they leave that turn, Ryan's still on the inside of Giz here. Ryan probably not going to give this up. Ryan is definitely not going to give this up. They're still side by side, so she is involved as well. Oh, Giz just... Oh, how close to the grass can you get there? As they head towards the right hander, Ryan gets that position. Lovely move by Ryan then in the end. As uh, through there they go. And uh, we're on the penultimate lap at the moment. And they're still fighting so, so hard here. In towards the hairpin here. Giz chucks it down the inside. Ooh, not quite. Not quite. And uh, this bringing in Dot Brown, of course. Dot Brown will be wanting this to happen. As uh, we continue towards uh, the 
the double apex hairpin. Elias is very close to Jama still. As Giz is down the inside of Ryan here. They're going to be side by side towards the left hander. Uh, pulls back in there. Smart driving. Going to have slipstream there for the oval. Just need to nail this left hander right as so they're through. There they go. Oof. Oof. How close can you get to the wall there? Let's have a quick gander at that P8 battle. How close is this? It's not that close at the moment. Let's jump to that P3 battle. Ryan, Giz and Tushia. They're going to have the slipstream here. And let's have a look at that quick battle up ahead. Jomas and Elias. Jomas is just a tenth ahead. You can see Giz making moves further back. Jomas goes very defensive into turn one. Is he going to get this car stopped? He does indeed. Going to stop it on the apex there, surely. Through there they go. Let's jump further back. Ryan still got the position from Giz there. Through the left-hander they go. As they head onto the uh, oval just for a brief period of time here. Giz on the inside of Ryan here. In towards the left-hander. Is Giz going to keep that position side by side? Through they go. A lovely bit of driving here. So she has to dab on the brakes there to avoid contact into the the right hander they go so she is right behind Ryan here through there they go and look at this unbelievable racing I'm just trying to keep an eye on Jamis and Elias as well so they head towards the right hander here Ryan on the inside of Giz and then so she is on the inside as well Giz gets it all a little bit wrong there into the braking zone through the right hander they go and it's still Ryan from Sushia here Giz on the inside Dot Brown's coming into the mix as well they have to they have to get this left hander right going on to the oval here as it's Ryan Giz Sushia Dot Brown's just in there as well I'm going to just keep on this battle for now in towards the left we go anybody going to touch the barrier here no they're not this is going to be very close Dot Brown touches the uh, barrier there but Jamas and Elias they're going to cross the line P1 and P2 for these drivers what a fantastic race by these two there's the checkered flag for these drivers congratulations to them Ryan's going to come home in P3. It's going to be close between Giz and Sushia. Oh, my word, that was close. P6 for Dot Brown. It's going to be Smith and Rapid towards the line. Oh, this is very close. Rapid just gets it on the line. Rapid P7, Smith P8, Lost Shell to P9. Uh, P10 for Clark, then TLE. Oh, that was all close as well. Matman P12. Uh, B Racing 1 is going to come home in P13. It looks like with Dave coming home in P14. What a fantastic race that was, boys and girls. And we have three more of them. We have three more. Three more races coming up later in about five or ten minutes' time. But what a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic race there. That was shown. Absolutely brilliant racing from everybody. Superb driving. Very clean driving. It's just exactly what we want to see. But there is your winner. LZR Jamas is your winner. Absolutely congratulations to Jamas there. Congratulations to everybody in that race. Let's just have a look at your provisional race results then. Obviously, if anyone wants to report a driver, they can do that. So these are just provisional for now. Um, but as you are Jamas, your race winner from Elias and then Ryan. They're your podium finishers, getting the maximum scores there they can. It's saying Giz, Sushia, Dot Brown, Rapid GT, Tessie Smith, Lost Shelty, R Clark, TLE, Matman, B Racing 1 and Dave. Wow, what a race there for everybody to watch. This is this is why it's made unbelievable stuff. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, if you want to take part, check out the PDF. Everything is in there. Anybody with a DR, a C, SR, of S can take part. Um, what's going to happen now is we're just going to have a brief break of about four minutes or five minutes or so. That's so I can drink a bit of water so my voice survives. Um, but please go get a drink. Go get some food. We have split two coming up very shortly. And uh, they're two temps separating the entire field. There was nearly a second separating them. Two temps separates the entire field in the next race. It is quite something. So make sure you do not disappear entirely go get food go get drink uh, and uh, we will see you very soon for split two i've got 30 minutes if you want to spill your mind give me all your reasons to why i should take my time used to have forever but you never cared that much
back then we've got the wrong bar on there let's get the right bar on now uh, this is split two of course hello everybody so we're just waiting for the drivers to filter in of course what a fantastic race that was it really really was brilliant uh, so if you're in split three or split four later on in the evening it looks like we are finishing uh, the races slightly earlier than planned so just be prepared to join that slight bit earlier uh, but all's very well and good as you can see everybody joining the lobby now so we have 14 more races in this race of course so Happy days that we have a full grid again, hopefully. Um, we do have reserves and everyone can move up one if somebody doesn't turn up. We've only had one person say they can't turn up, um, but that's in split four, so I'll talk about that afterwards. So, as I say, I hope you all enjoyed that first race. It was absolutely phenomenal, to be honest with you. Um, we couldn't have asked for anything better. I mean, it flew by. I actually couldn't believe how fast that went by. Uh, <laughs> all IGTL admin are laughing at GT Alex at the moment, um, which is unfortunate. But when you see how close the grid was, um, it was insane, absolutely insane. Let's have a look at. Th uh, I can't speak. Let's have a look at some of the liveries then during this one. So we go on School Crusher at the moment. So my car is not what? Oh, I've got to have a look at this now. My car is not your brake. Don't be a fool. Drive fair, drive cool. I like that message. Fair play. I think I lost four litres of water. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I'm, I hope every single driver enjoyed that one. Um, but, uh, like, literally, it was uh, it was brilliant racing. Thank you to everyone who took part in that. Hopefully we see the same in this split, too. So, you can just see Skull Crushers having a bit of a practice with the start. So, we go to Mikey Michaelton now. Just one of these names you may recognise from Mini Madness, of course. Uh, I'm so looking forward to round two now. Glad I signed up for this. Oh, good to hear, Sushia. Congratulations on the racing as well. Absolutely superb stuff. Uh, so we've got Mikey Michaelton here. Let's have a look at this livery. We've got green and white. Now, if memory serves me correctly, Mikey had the PG Tips livery on the old mini. Uh, but we're looking at that shortly. Ooh, let's get that menu off there. That's not very good. Turtle Wax. There we go. We get a decent look at that. Though we'll have a look at Hobie. Uh, oh, Spiner with a 16.5. Spiner's been practicing here. So uh, that would get you into top split. But uh, this is split two. So have we got a Ferrari here? A Ferrari. <laughs> oh, it's superb driving from everybody. No, it's not a Ferrari. We've got FIA action on there as well by Hobie. Yeah, I'm trying to keep an eye on who we haven't seen here. So we've got Spiner here. With a 16.5 at the moment. So let's have a go. We've got the Motul here. We've got a lot of old school like, Nissan liveries. We've had the Pennzoil one, of course. We've got the Falcon one. And now we've got the uh, the Motul livery. So that's a more recent one. We can see it on the uh, latest GTR Group 2 car. The Motul livery right there. Let's have a look at Scourge now. Uh, don't worry, I've saved the replay. I will share all the replays. Do not panic yourself. So there we have Scourge. Get a good look at this livery now. Nissan, old school Nissan livery there as well. Uh, GT Alex up into um, P2 there. That's with a 16 as well. So obviously GT Alex representing IGTL. We saw that livery last year on the old Mini. And it was an old Mini, that is for sure. 
Oh, I love the uh, G74 Alex on there as well. So let's have a look at uh, Budweiser can. It isn't the Budweiser one. We're, we're all disappointed. There we go. There we go. We knew it. We all knew it. Absolutely knew it. And uh, we can see that there. So we missed out Trevo Nick in all of that. Let's jump to Trevo Nick. As uh, we've got, oh, wow, look at this. Full patriotic image there. The Union Jack all over the car. It was an old Audi livery. What? Rip. It said Nissan on it. <laughs> Ripperoni. Um, so we can see, look at that. It, looks, it actually looks really nice, that, to be fair. Really nice. I love the fact that it's Union Jack's just the front rather than all of it. I think that's actually better. Now we go to a classic, absolute classic here. We saw the mini of this. The Pampers machine is back. It's been, it was evolved basically into the uh, Greddy Fuguzi. And uh, it's Forest 4A. I'm not sure whether Forest is actually sponsored by Pampers. Gets all the nappies for free. Might need some nappies during this with some of the uh, racing we had earlier. My word, it was epic. Let's jump to, uh, oh, we just quickly jumped there. Bex just improved on the lap, so we went to Bex rather than Johnny Wheatel. Let's have a look at Bex. So we can just see a bit of uh, silver. The it's that glistening colour, isn't it? No, it's just a silver, actually. It's not the one that Lewis used last time. Let's jump to Johnny Wito now. We've got the racing Datsun there. Now, that is a livery everybody recognises. Surely everybody recognises this livery. You must do. Uh, Johnny Wito just improves there. We're getting quite a few um, 16s, actually, above. I mean, three... Yeah, so Scourge, Mikey, GT Alex, and Spiner all in the 16s there. Uh, we now need to jump to position... No, we've, we've, seen, uh, we've seen Budweiser's, we've seen Bex, we've seen the Skull Crushers. Uh, we've got Murray Mulls. We haven't seen Murray Mulls, actually. Let's have a look at Murray Mulls. I love this track. This is one of my favourite circuits. That's why it's in again. So in terms of the tracks, by the way, in the rounds, they actually progress through the day. Now, one change, if you watched the video, I did say that the Red Bull Ring would be in the wet. That is now in the dry. Um, that was due to a grip issue I had when testing. Apparently, I had too much grip. Um, and then everyone tried it and had no grip. So, that's been changed. So, it's 8.30 a.m. currently in terms of Gran Turismo. So, the next one is at 10.45. Then it goes to 12.01 and so on and so forth until we get to night time in round six. So, uh, that's the uh, what we're doing there. Um, who are we missing? We haven't looked at T Minter's livery here. We've got a light blue. Tropica. Tropica on the uh, the old livery there. And I do believe we've then seen everybody's livery. If I've missed anybody, apologies, but we will see you in there. Oh my word, my voice is going already. <clears throat> we'll try and survive. We will try and survive. Um, as we just see T Minter come through here. Right, as we've got 14 drivers, which is exactly what we're after, um, what we're going to do now before we kick off with the race is we're just going to have a quick look at um, another bit of the program um, in terms of what it is. Let me just tell you what it is. Um, ah, we're just having a nice little break with a video you potentially have already seen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just finishing the final part of the grid. So, obviously, I'm just looking at the qualifying at the moment. Uh, you obviously get to see something that we just looked at just before in uh, one moment's time. 
Um, we're just finalizing this grid here, and that is all golden, I believe. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, we've got Budweiser, Skull Crusher, Trevor Nick, Hobie, Mikey, Team and Ted. Perfect! We are golden as we need to be here, folks. Um, let's jump to that spectator view just for a brief moment. Does anyone have any questions before we kick off with uh, the funky looking graphics that we have, of course? Um, otherwise, we will have a look at, of course, the grid walk. We do have a grid walk again. Now Daytona is coming in GT7, we already know this, so fantastic, because I love Daytona, the in the intersection, the road course, I think it's called, isn't it? Superb, superb track. Uh, we'll certainly be using that in a future championship, I can tell you that much. Let's get to 100 likes, yeah, let's do that as well. But look at GT Alex, 16-4 for GT Alex, I think um, Alex is uh, trying to show what he can actually do. Does this one have Greek girls? Well, you've got me. So, I've dressed up as a Spice Girl once, so that is, um, that's about as appropriate. Right, um, I think we are going to, uh, get ready here. Uh, let me just let the drivers know that we are starting soon. This Daytona, fair dues. <clears throat> Tanked quality confirmed. Well, that's the part about quality. So, for those that don't know, qualifying is two flying laps only. That's all you get. That's the only chance you, you get. So, if you mess up twice, it's game over. Game over. Congrats to 15k. Thank you so much, TLE. Thank you so much indeed. In fact, it was a little bit delayed. So when I was talking earlier on stream, uh, when I, I was having a look at the um, what was happening in terms of YouTube and the way it works, etc., you could tell that the Assetto Corsa stuff, but obviously everyone's searching that lately. So all the Gran Turismo stuff had uh, gone down. Titch is all the grid girl I need. That is too kind. That is too kind. Right, without further ado then, I think it's time to have a look at what is going to happen in terms of uh, the grid. And you get to see the times just one more time. Welcome to your split two grid then. On pole is Scourge missing out by one thousandth there. And Spanner coping in P2. P3, Hasnane, followed by Mario Moles. Uh, row three now is Bex and GT Alex. Row four, we have Johnny Wito and Budweiser Can, with row five being School Crusher and Trevor Nick. Row six is Hobie and Mikey Magton, with row seven being Team Inter and Forrest, and that is your split two grid. So here we go. Are you ready for the second race here? Split two. So the winner of split two is going to beat some of the uh, people in split one. So let's see what's going to happen here. As you can see, the grid is lined up there. Scourge one, Scourge one thousandth off split one. That was the craziest thing of all. As we get ready here, get ready to begin the race. You can see everybody lined up there. As uh, we're waiting for that green... I mean, why can't the flag guy fl wave a green flag here? What, what's that about? Come on, PD. Let's get it sorted. He's just holding the checkered flag as if it's starting. But here we go. It looks like Hasnane had a pretty good start there, I think. But somebody further back had an even better start. I'm not sure who that is. Is that Bex? It is Bex indeed. Bex is making moves already. Bex on the inside of Hasnane. Murray Moles looks like... It's a terrible start there. In towards the left-hander. There's going to be three, four wide, maybe, into the left-hander we go. But it's going to be Scourge from Spiner. Murray Moles actually making moves around the outside. That's superb driving from Murray Moles. Kept it on the outside and keeps our position as they go two, three wide in towards the left-hander here. Oh, my word. What a start this is. And uh, through we go. And looks like Bex up into P4 there from P5, I think it was. And they're side by side further back. Lovely bit of driving from everybody. Johnny Wito's off into the grass. That's going to have dirt on his tyres there. Has name. We miss Hasnane's livery. That's somebody who we miss. As we have a look at that purple machine there in towards the right-hander. And uh, everybody gets it stopped. Lovely bit of driving from everybody there. Superb. Two by two. Through the hairpin we go. Uh, Spiner. It's on the outside of Bex. The Spine is the one that lost out the most at the start there, I think, in terms of dropping positions. And uh, Bex done very well at the start there. Absolutely superb as they head towards the oval for the first time here. As anybody, is anybody going to hit the barrier? It's critical you don't hit the barrier. As we look further back, a couple of grazes, nothing major. Everybody's round. All 14 drivers on the same piece of tarmac. Let's go with this race. As we jump to Scourge, six tenths ahead of Murray Moles. Uh, we then have Bex very close. Spiner. GT Alex with Skull Crusher all over his trumpet there. Uh, at least we have no funny names in this one. Uh, because uh, that, well, I'm not sure I could handle another one like that. As it into the left hand, there we go. Line of stern, through there we go. And uh, it looks like we've got some further action with Team Inter and Hasnane there. 
Mikey Ryan a little bit wide there as well. Forrest on the inside of uh, Hobie there in towards the left hander. Uh, gets it done and dusted there. Through Forrest goes. Oh, Mikey's off. Mikey's off into into the grass and slightly grazes the barrier there. Manages to stop it and avoid hitting anybody else. Fair play to Mikey. Gonna have lots of dirt on his tyres. You can see that there. Dirt on the tyres from running wide and turn one, I think. Um, but uh, it does manage to sort itself out. So might get back in the mix. Team into that on the inside of. I didn't see who, who that was then. Um, it is Trevo Nick there with the Union Jack. I should know that because that's a brilliant looking livery. They're all brilliant liveries as we come through the left hander here. And uh, we continue on to Scourge. And only three attempts ahead now of Murray Moles. Bex is in there as well. And we're going to have a massive battle here, I think. First all the way down is so, so close. Uh, remember that this qualifying was covered by two attempts. First to 14th was two attempts of a second. They are all very, very even. Very, very even. The Scourge scrapes a barrier. You don't want to do that on the start finish straight. And you can see that gap drop in there to Murray Moles as they head towards turn number one. And uh, Murray's just staying behind for now. Look how close it is. Unbelievable stuff here from these drivers. Uh, keeping it nice and clean as well. Always good to see. As uh, Team Inter on the inside of Trevonic carries on there in P9. I think Team Inter was already ahead. Trevonic looking to get the move done again in towards the left-hander. Pulls back in behind. As we've got a little bit of moves action there with Budweiser. Skullcrusher's got something wrong there at some point. Because Skullcrusher was right behind GT Alex at some point. Manages to slow the car down there with... Has uh, Johnny Weetal going around the outside? Sorry, we've got two purple machines here. I'm going to have to remember that. Oh, blue and purple are close. As uh, so we've got three wide up ahead. Oh my word, what's kicking off with the lead? What is kicking off with the lead there? Because Murray Moles, Bex are all in there now. We've got action, action, action. And Scourge has lost out here at some point. Details runs a little bit wide there to happen. But uh, yeah, Murray Moles up into lead now. Scourge into P2. And Bex into P3 as they head on to the oval. Once again, in towards the left hander they go. And they all survive for now. I did want to have a look at the um, the move earlier on, but I can't do it because we keep having action, action, action as we head now towards the start-finish line. Uh, Scourge, is he going to have a move here? He's only one tenth behind Murray Mills. He looks to go towards the inside here. Bex is then going to have slipstream as well. Is Bex going to follow Scourge down in towards turn one? Let's have a look. In towards turn one we go. Scourge managing to stop the car just. And Bex down the inside as well. A little bit of contact with Murray, but nothing major there. But through they go. And Murray's dropping all the way down to P number four. P number four for Murray. Spine is now up into P3 on the inside of Murray. In towards the left hander they go. And it's a five way scrap here for the lead at the moment. As uh, Murray looks trying to make a move back, but doesn't quite do it there. In towards the Right hand, uh, maybe scared Spine a little bit. GT Alex looking to make moves now on Murray Moles as they head towards the hairpin here. Oh, it looks like we've got a move for the lead as well. Bex, uh, sorry, Bex defending from Scourge. Uh, Alex with a move on Murray Moles in towards the hairpin. Gets it stopped just as they side by side through. There they go. And uh, in towards the left. Oh, a little bit of oversteer there for Budweiser can as we hit the left hander now. You can see the oversteer there. Alex was actually counter steering there at the start of the corner. That's how much these cars over rotate sometimes. It's why you want to put the brake balance towards that front a little bit as uh, we continue on through the left hander. Line of stern further back as well. So have a quick gander at that. Um, you can see there Johnny Wheatall, the school crusher team into one. Trevo, Nick, and Hasnane. They're all very close. But let's jump to the lead battle here. Bex and Scourge. They're going to be side by side crossing the line here. Imagine if it finished like that. That would be very, very close as they head towards turn one again. Let's start lap number five now. Into the left hander. Scourge going to get the move done potentially here. Job done there. Stopped in the apex as well. Beautiful driving. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, as they leave now and join the old ones again. Bex going for the cutback there. He actually nails it as well, I think. Bex going to keep that position in towards the left-hander here for sure, 100%. Uh, and does keep it. And Spiner looking to have an opportunity at the pass as well. Not quite there. In towards the right-hander. And it, they're fighting here. It's bringing everybody else back into it. How far back is this battle now? I'm going to have to have a look here. 11th place can see first here. 11th. This is... Uh, yeah, I'm going to... My voice is going to be gone by the end of this race, I'm sure. Uh, but Bex currently leading the way here from Scourge, Spiner, GT Alex. In towards the left hander we go. And uh, anybody's looking to try and break away as fast as possible. But it's not working out at the moment. So everyone's just trying to gain those little bit of positions. Remember the top four positions have a four point difference. Top three positions have a four point difference. So first to second, second to third, and then third to fourth. And it's two points then going down from there. As uh, we continue now on to start finish race. So Bex has broken that gap a little bit here. Uh, I don't think any moves will be made there. Everyone's very, very close. Uh, Budweiser, everybody's... Look at this. Everybody's in the slipstream here. Everybody. 
Uh, set for it. Forest is just outside it with Trevor and Nick. So Hobie's catching up a very, very, very fast pace of nuts here. Is Hobie going to go for the move down towards turn one? Not quite. And there's your 14 drivers. We've gone through all 14. They're all on the same straight. Superb driving from everybody as we hit the left hander now. And Beck still leading the way. Line of stern. You'd love me saying that, I'm sure. Need a, an emote with that. As uh, through the right hander we go. And look at this camera angle. Superb. Superb. You get to see every single car there as they head towards the uh, hairpin. Who do you want to win, folks? Let me know in those in the chat. Who's your money on? With everybody basically with a chance at the moment. You make one mistake, you're going to the back of the grid. We saw that earlier on with Mikey. Who's your money on? Who do you want to win? I have no idea, and I'm not doing any commentary, curses, or bias at all. As uh, we hit the left hander once again. Oh, Bex skims the wall. I saw that coming a mile off. That's going to give Scourge a better run on Bex here, I'm sure. No, not quite. I'm not sure what happened there, but Bex actually pulling away there. Going to take a shower, Jamas. Oh, wow, this championship is uh, ten cent for you, Jamas. Look at that. A World Tour finalist having a bit of a hard time in terms of sweat in, the, in this race. It's good to see. It's the pinnacle community championship. That's what our goal is here as we come into this left-hander once again. Line the stern. Bet Scourge Spiner, GT Alex. Uh, so, anyone but Alex. Wow, Kenny's really cooking the uh, shots at Alex at the moment. I wonder if Alex is listening. Uh, let's jump a bit further back. It looks like Spiner got a little bit wrong there through the double left. And onto the uh, back straight here. We've got big battles throughout. Nobody making any serious moves at the moment. They're all sort of keeping those gaps. GT Alex is lurking. We can definitely see that for sure. Johnny Retail's lurking on Budweiser can as well. So I'm just trying to keep an eye out on all the fights going on here. Because everybody's so close. This is without boost on. This is like pure racing here. This is what I love about this. You know, we just changed the setup a little bit from our first one. And this is pure racing. Pure, pure racing. As uh, we come onto the oval here. And uh, they all survived that. So let's jump to the lead battle. It looks like Scourge may have had an issue coming onto the uh, the oval here. Because Spiner's up into P2. But Scourge is going to have the slipstream of Bex here. So this is going to be very tight. Heading towards turn number one. We'll try and have a look at a replay at some point. As uh, we head towards the start finish line here. Start lap number eight. It's going to be Spiner on the inside. Scourge on the outside. In towards turn one we go. Who's getting this position? GT Alex could capitalise on this. If these two fight hard. And uh, Spiner oh, gets it a little bit wrong there. Slight tap. But GT Alex does capitalise on it. And side by side side with Scourge and is going to get that position up into P3 for now for GT Alex and uh, through the double left we go so P3 for GT Alex for now lurks there got the position happy days uh, and they're still in touch with Bex as well Let's look further back there we've got Budweiser who's dropped a couple of positions there with uh, Johnny Wito uh, oh actually off there Budweiser Budweiser's gone off there huge error and it's going to drop all the way to the back of the field of it oh sorry not to the back I'm not sure who's at the back there they've had a terrible time uh, we'll try and identify who that is shortly uh, but Budweiser getting it all wrong there dropping all the way back from P6 down to P11 that's how tight this field is it really is tight as uh, we hit the left hander now. And Budweiser still struggling with the tyres at the moment. Going to have to settle down here is Budweiser. Just calm it down a little bit. Focus and get back involved. Who is at the back of the field? Hobie. Hobie's had a disaster somewhere. Not sure what's happened there with Hobie. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens during the race as uh, Budweiser hits the, uh, the barrier there. As uh, we continue on now towards lap number nine. We're just going through the field here. And uh, it's all line of stern pretty much. There's Budweiser who we just saw clip the barrier there. So Mikey's catching as we head towards turn number one. And uh, we'll try and have a look at the move that happened for GTR. Oh, Forest Foray gets all sorts of sideways there. All sorts of sideways into turn one. And going to keep that position for now. Let's have a look at GT Alex's move um, into turn number one. Oh, no. We wow, this is actually very early on, isn't it? It's actually much too early on. Oh, this no, so this is Scourge. Scourge hitting the barrier, I suspect. Yeah, scrape the barrier. That's how Spiner got on the inside. So that's how Spiner got on the inside and got the position from Scourge. And that caused the battle, obviously, later on in the race. Scourge now down to P5. I'm not sure what's happened there. Scourge dropping like um Well, like anything to be honest with you. He's dropping down the order. Again, going to have to calm it down a little bit, a bit like Budweiser. Oh, Johnny Wito gets it all sorts of wrong there. After Skull Crusher, they're going to be very close to each other. Skull Crusher, well, I think Johnny Wito let him go there. I'm not sure whether Skull Crusher's just um, 
Oh, well, I'm not sure whether Johnny Rito held up School Crusher to just get that position back. Good sportsmanship there. Looks like a flash of the hazards. Uh, so now it's back to racing for those two drivers. Uh, so a bit of a little, little bit of an incident, but good sportsmanship shown there for both those drivers. As they head towards turn number one. GT Alex up into P2 now. Uh, can we see that? I can't keep up with the action here. It's kind of insane. GT Alex is already in P2 there. I can't see what happened there as we continue on now with the racing. Check out the description, Questionable Gamer. All the information is in there in terms of Fugu Frenzy. So we've got a five-way scrap now. So these folks have broken away from P6. P6 is all under all sorts of pressure there. Skull Crusher, Johnny Wito. That was an accident earlier on that we did see. Uh, oh, we've got action there with Scourge and Murray Mulls. So Scourge just gets that position back from Murray Mulls. Can we have a look at that? So you can see Scourge here lining up Murray Mulls in towards the hairpin. Gets lined up. Goes for straight line breaking here. Um, ooh, ran a little bit deep but goes full oversteer. Uh, but does get that position there. Bex leading the way as we come off uh, come off the left hander. And onto the start finish straight of the oval. So it's Bex from GT Alex from Spiner. They're your top three at the moment. They've broken away from Scourge and Murray Mulls. So they have some work to do as well. As the field starts spreading out here, we had a little bit of a flash there from School Crusher. Uh, maybe trying to put Murray Moles and Scourge off to try and work together maybe in the future. Who knows? As they come through the left hander. Shrimp to team into. He's run a little bit wide there. And that's going to give Hasnain a little bit of a move on the inside there. Hasnain taking full advantage of team into running wide there. And it was left hander. Hasnain's going to have the advantage and gets that position. For you. Oh, Johnny Wito! Johnny Wito's gone off to Narnia. Full on spin as well. Full on spin. We'll have to have a look at what happened there. Johnny Wito falls all the way down. So has nine up into P7 there. Everybody gains some positions. Uh, we'll have a look at the lead in a second. I'm looking if Team Inter makes a move. Not quite. Um, let's see if we can have a look at this incident. Johnny Wito on the inside of School Crusher here. And what happens? Oh, just too deep. Too deep into the corner. And ran off there, hits the barrier and goes for a little bit of a spin. That's how critical it is. So from the battle in P6, Johnny Wito all the way down to P13. And so we go line of stern again still for the lead. No change here. Uh, we do have a big battle going on for P4 though. With Scourge and Murray Mills. Nothing going to happen there at the moment, I don't think. I don't think Murray Mills is close enough. Uh, and then we're going to go all the way back down here. T Minter, Trevor Nick, they're very close. Uh, but Team Inter does have the slipstream of Haslane in front as they uh, head towards turn one. S for Wito confirmed. And in we go. And uh, it's still Linus Stern. So a big battle going on here for that P6 position. So it's P6 to P12. Lots of points on offer there. That's 12 points difference between them. They come through to the left and then they're going to hit the right hander. Oh, line of stern. You see Scourge and Murray Moles just in your forefront there, just for a brief moment. Let's now jump to that lead battle because Bex and Alex are going at it here. Alex looking around the outside at the hairpin. That is not going to happen there, GT Alex, but it's going to have a potential run here. Heading towards the oval, going to have a big run here. Look at that gap. That's coming down very quickly. Under two tenths now as it hit the oval once again. Oh, Alex gets it a little bit wrong there, I think. Not going to have the run anymore uh, as they continue on the oval. Just not enough there for GT Alex, I don't think. But we'll see what happens as they head towards turn one. Lovely driving from everybody so far. We're over halfway through this race now. These races are going flying by here. The time is actually flying by as well. It's actually kind of nuts, to be honest with you. As we head towards turn one here. GT Alex looking potentially for the move. It does go down the inside here. Bex gets it wrong. Goes a little bit too deep. GT Alex goes deep as well. And Bex is going to come back in. Scour uh, Spine is going to be in the mix. And that's going to bring potentially Scourge into the, the mix soon as well. But Bex just gets that position from GT Alex. GT Alex looking for the cutback again. They're going to be side by side heading towards the right hander here. Bex going to have the advantage though surely through the right hander we go. But GT Alex is going to carry the momentum here. They head towards the hairpin side by side action here. This is exactly what we want to see as we head towards the hairpin here. GT Alex on the left. Back on the right, Spider trying to decide where to go. GT Alex are going for obviously a breaking. It works. And that also brings Scourge and Murray Moles back into this mix. So it's a five way battle for your lead here. With GT Alex now leading the way from Bex and then Spiner. School Crusher leading that P6 battle with Hasnain. And uh, they've got a little bit of a gap to team into Forest there, further back. As they head towards the oval here. 
Everybody taking it very cautiously there. Very cautiously. Nobody wants to be in the barrier there. Uh, how's Johnny Wito doing? Johnny Wito, eight seconds off. Budweiser can. Look at that. That one mistake cost eight seconds. It's kind of crazy, to be honest with you. Let's jump towards the lead battle now as Bex is very close. GT Alex here. Bex will give it a move. Daddy inside. Goes for the lunge. Goes for the lunge. And... Doesn't get it done. GT Alex manages to keep it just there. That brings Spiner to the mix here. Spiner in the mix. Gonna have the slipstream. Gonna be side by side with Bex. In towards the left hander. Spiner goes very wide there to try and avoid any form of contact. And is gonna pull back in behind Bex for now. Here's your five way scrap for the race victory at the moment. And we've got a big scrap now between Hasdane and Skull Crusher. There, nose to tail there. Through the right hander they go. And is are any moves going to happen here? Skull Crusher gaining, 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 gaining. Does not go for the move for now. Gets a little bit of a wiggle on in the breaking zone as well. As we jump further back here, uh, Forrest, Trevonic, Mikey team into Budweiser can. There's a five way scrap as well. Uh, so Trevonic potentially looking on the inside of Forrest. No, pulls out of it for now. In towards the left hander and they continue on with the race. And let's jump to your race lead at the moment. GTI like seven temps from Spiner. And then Bex is under, under all sorts of pressure here from Scourge. Very wise move by uh, Spiner. I have to agree there, uh, Zany. As uh, Bex under all sorts of pressure here. Scourge getting closer and closer. Obviously had a brilliant run onto the oval here. Scourge looking down the inside here. On the inside of Bex. Bex obviously did that move earlier on. Scourge now going for it. Oh, wow. Stopped on the apex. I think Bex was going for the cutback. Didn't quite work because Scourge was like, I'm drifting into turn one like I'm drifting into DMs here. And that's what Scourge did. And it worked. It worked perfectly. Uh, so we continue on now. Has Nain and Skull Crusher. There's still line of stern. Uh, and Forest A is still line of stern with Trevor Nick and team into 51 there. And uh, they head towards that right hander. Budweiser kind of over the back of Mikey there as well. So three we go. Let's jump to that lead battle. Still GT Alex from Spiner. Then we have Scourge, of course. We did it, boys. We reached 100 likes. Congratulations, everybody. Happy days. I'm glad you're enjoying the show here. Um, I'm just, yeah, it's just going fantastic so far. So let's hope it continues to do so. As you can see, the five-way fight for that lead. GT Alex pulling a gap here as well. Look at that well, faster slap as well. 16.4 by GT Alex. Not quite Ryan's 15.8, but even so, it's still a very quick lap time. And uh, they're going to come on to the start finish straight here. Start line number 16. We're going to jump to this battle here. This is Hasdane and Skull Crusher. They are very, very, very close here. Now, Hasdane, of course, doesn't have uh, Slipstream. Skull Crusher does. As uh, we continue towards turn number one. And Hasdane went a little bit defensive there. Skull Crusher trying to go for the optimum line here to try and get a really nice cutback. Not sure that's going to quite work for now, but let's wait and see. Actually, pulls up, oh, pulls up a lot of speed there. Look at the gap come down there. Nearly under a tenth as we head towards the left-hander there. So that was actually a really good line by Skull Crusher. So potentially looking to make moves. Drifts there. Avoids contact. Well played. Oh no! Skull Crusher gets it all sorts of wrong there. All sorts of wrong. Going to be under all sorts of pressure from behind with Forest 4. A. No, just had a gap there. Just had a gap. Let's see if we can have another look at that. So according to this left hander. So he tries to avoid contact here with Hasnane. Gets a little bit of OST. You can just see that. Uh, just clips the grass, manages to catch it, which is fair play, but loses all that time to Hasnane for now. Good effort, though. Good effort and good catch. So, GT Alex leading the way from Spiner. Three tenths that gap now, so that gap's come significantly down again. And uh, Spiner is closing here. And uh, I think going to actually be all over the back of uh, GT Alex. GT Alex semi defensive here. Goes towards the left. Spiner doesn't go for the move for now. Alex breaks it extremely late there. Uh, but does get it stopped. Spiner goes a little bit deep here. Scourge could have gone for an opportunity potentially. As uh, we head on to the oval again. And no, not quite there. So still line of stern for those drivers. Uh, we can look further back. School Crushers now got all the pressure from Forrest. And Hasnane can breathe slightly easier. Where's Team Inter come from? Team Inter's on the inside of the circuit. What's going on there? Very, very, very strange that. We'll see if we can have a look at the replay. But it's going to have dirt on his tyres. Gets out of the way of Budweiser there. It's good sportsmanship. And uh, falls back down to P12. Let's have a look. See if we can have a look what happened to Team Inter in all of this. So, oh, was there a little tag there with Trevo, Nick? I think there was. I think there was a little bit of a tag. So, Team Inter, being very good sportsman there, stays out of the way of Trevo, Nick. Lets him get the position back and then pulls back onto 
the, uh, the it pulls us back into the race, should I say. So, you know, good, good sportsmanship there from everybody. So he jumps that lead battle now. Look at this, GT Alex under pressure here. Two and a half tenths. That's coming down rapid. Look at that. One and a half tenths now. It's now a tenth. Spiner looking to get the move done. It's going side by side here with GT Alex. We approach lap, or the start of lap number 18 here. Spiner on the inside of GT Alex. Heading towards Turbo. Gets a position. Has to try and keep it now. Scourge looking to be opportunistic as well. Trying at the inside. Spiner gives GT Alex a bit too much room off here. A bit too much room, but we'll have to wait and see. My voice is going <laughs> as we head towards the left. GT Alex keeps our position for now. And uh, we head now towards the right-hander. Scourge very much in the mix now. Looking for the move down into the right-hander. That's a sketchy move and a half. But uh, decides to pull out of it in that situation. And uh, we continue on. Uh, Murray Moles just going off a little bit there. Murray Moles going to lose a slipstream with that mistake. But I can see a lot of battling happening here. Especially towards the end of the race. So uh, Murray probably still in the fight for that uh, P1 position. And... Maybe has name can catch up as well because that gap is significantly coming down as well. Now, Forest 4A has managed to get past Skull Crusher in all of this. Uh, I'm not sure what's happened with that move. And then we've got Mikey up into P9 now. So Mikey's making a return, well, moving forward after the earlier mistake. So that's looking good for Mikey. Let's head on to the oval. And we'll jump to that lead battle because it's side by side there for Bex and Scourge. Scourge has obviously had a bit of a misfortune at the start of the oval. But GT Alex are going to um, stay in the lead for now. Forgot to drive. Whoa. Oh, I don't worry, I will be commentating till the very end. I will never quit, ever. As uh, we continue through the left-hander here. And it's still line of stern for those folks. Let's see if we can have a look what happened to Scourge coming onto the oval. Oh, it already happened. You can see it already happened. Can we go further back? Let me go further back, please. Oh, here we go. Yeah, straight into the barrier. Hard. Very hard there. So that's what happened to Scourge. Kind of expected. That's why he lost so much speed there. So we're trying to push on, but unfortunately lost out there. Right, let's jump back to the racing action. GTLX still under pressure from Spiner here. Bex and Scourge still in the mix. Uh, Murray has a lot of work to do there to catch up. Actually coming under pressure from Hasnane a little bit, it looks like. As they hit the double left-hander. Let's have a quick gander further back here. Mikey P9. Forest P7. Skullcrush P8. So there's the line of stern as well. We'll jump back to the race lead at the moment. And uh, through we go. GT Alex from Spiner. That's two and a half temps. I'm not sure that's enough to make a move at turn one. But we will wait and see. So positive. You can hear the wind and the rain. It's uh, picking up quite a bit here. As uh, we continue towards the start-finish sign. That gap coming down to just under a tenth, I think. But not quite enough there for turn one. Superb racing from these guys. Been very clean again. Uh, awesome to see. I always expect the first round to be the most sketchy. Because obviously everyone's new. Back into the barrier there. Everyone's fairly new to the new championship. We obviously did Mini Madness last year. But this is Fugu Frenzy this year. But it, it's superb to see. Do keep an eye out for something for Mini Madness. There's uh, something coming up with that. Uh, GT Alex knows, but nobody else. Or GT Alex doesn't know. He knows something's happening, but doesn't know what. As we look further back here, and uh, Murray Moles and Hasnane, they're fighting now for that P5 position. Remember, if Hasnane can get the P5 position, that's an extra two points in the championship. The championship is literally two points a place for the top three in any split, which is four points. So it can get very, very, very close in terms of the championship as uh, we continue on now. Let's jump towards that lead battle then. GT Alex, Spiner, Beck, Scourge, they're all line of stern through the left-hander. Uh, nobody's uh, taking that risk, Scourge, avoiding that barrier now. We look at the uh, P5 battle here. Murray Moles has name. They avoid the barrier. Uh, we've got Forrest there. Oh, wow, Oversteer to definitely try and avoid it. As uh, we see everybody come through there. And uh, what's happened to Johnny Wito? That gap's come down from 8 seconds to 5.5. Still not enough to catch up. And Hobie's uh, still further back there. Let's jump to the P1 battle again. Because we're heading towards the closure of this race now. You can see GT Alex is under all sorts of pressure from Spider. Three tenths of a second here. As they uh, come towards the right-hander once again. And uh, GT Alex was always doing a little bit there. But they're still line of stern here, these drivers. As you can see, the next folks coming through here. Hasnain, Murray Moles. And then we've got Forest Foray, Skullcrusher, Mikey Michaelton, Budweiser, 
Oh, we've got Team Inter in there as well. Apologies, Team Inter. And then we've got Johnny Wito just a bit further back there. <clears throat> Murray Moles is into P6. I wonder what happened. Well spotted there, kick. Well spotted indeed. I wonder whether we can see that at any point in this. So that already happened. So that must have happened on the previous lap on the start finish straight. Here we go then. Six tenths of a second for Alex at the moment. He's got a bit of breathing room here. And uh, as we head towards the start finish time, we're about to start the penultimate lap here. Penultimate lap here in split two. GTLX from Spiner, Bex, and then Scourge in towards the left hand. Here we go. And it looks like Bex was having a little bit of a sneaky look at Spiner there. Not quite going to work this time round. Nine tenths off that uh, P1 position is Bex. And uh, everyone will be looking to try and get the last two positions here. Forest 4A goes full on drift. And actually, further back, we've got Mikey looking on the inside of Skull Crusher. And is on the inside of Skull Crusher. Is going to look for the move here, potentially into the left hander. Backs out of it there. Decides against it. Try and keep that position for now. He'll be looking for the move on the final lap instead. In towards the right hander. There you go. Let's jump towards that lead battle again. GTI still six steps ahead here. Uh, from Spiner, and then we've got Scourge. There's still line of stern here. Scourge under pressure from Bex, so we'll have to wait and see who's going to be making moves here. Oh, Scourge gets all sorts of sideways there, all sorts of sideways, uh, but still accelerating away there in towards the left. As they all... Oh, wow, Bex got close to the barrier then. Spiner's pulled up a... Oh, look at the speed. Spiner's carried through the last corner here. Spiner could be going for a move here, headed towards... Turn one for the last time here. It's going to be Spiner versus GT Alex. It's his one tenth. It's under a tenth for a second now. Spiner looking on the inside of GT Alex. GT Alex keeps it tight here. Keeps it tight. They head towards the first corner. GT Alex takes the racing line. Spiner down the inside here. Spiner down the inside. GT Alex trying to go around the outside here. Goes for the side here. Spiner's still got it. Spiner's still got it. Through they go. Side by side. They're going to be side by side here towards the left. Spiner's going to have the advantage here. Spiner going to have the... No! Spider pulls out of it at the very last second. GT Alex keeps that position. Oh my word, what a race we've got going on here for these final positions. In towards the right hander they go. And they're going to say line astern for now. How's then? Under all sorts of pressure from Murray Moles here. Let's jump further back here. We've got Forest Foray from School Crusher from Mikey, Trevor Nick, Team Inter, and Budweiser Can. These positions haven't really changed since we looked at it previously. Let's jump back towards that lead battle now. GT Alex. Four and a half temps. Now just four temps ahead of Spiner. They hit the left-hander here. And who's going to have a good run here? Remember, Spiner's had some cracking runs here at GT Alex throughout this race. In towards the left-hander for the final time. GT Alex gets it wrong, I think. GT Alex gets it wrong. Oh, uh, Spiner's going to have a run here. Spiner's going to have a run here. As they head to, towards the start-finish line. Is it going to be enough? It's a one and a half temps. It's coming down. It's coming down closer and closer and closer. It's under a temp. My voice is going to go, but GT Alex just gets it from Spiner. How close was that from Scourge and Bex? It's going to be Hasnane from Murray and Moles. Oh, my word. <laughs> Skull Crusher from Mikey Michaelton, then Trevo Nick. Uh, then we have Budweiser Can, who overtakes Team Inter at the end there, I believe. Uh, we're then going to have Johnny Wito coming home in the blue and white racing Datsun. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have Homie coming home in P14. I nearly lost my voice during the end of that. I can I just say that? <laughs> what a finish we had here, folks. Another absolute cracking race. Unbelievable stuff from all these drivers. Once again, 38,000 separates first and second. But GT Alex comes away, your race victor here, gets the maximum points for split two. Ah, what a finish. What an absolute finish that is there. As uh, we're just going to save that replay and have a look at the provisional race results again. Let's lob the mouse somewhere else there. But GT Alex, your race victor by 38 thousandths of a second. From then Spiner and then Scourge. They're your top three there. Your podium finishes for split two. It's then going to be Bex, Hasnane, Murray Moles. Murray had a terrible end to that race. Uh, maybe they just sweated too much. I don't know because it is a bit of a sweat box these races. Uh, we then have Forrest, School Crusher, Mikey, Trevor Nick, Budweiser Can, Team Minter, 51, Johnny Wito, who we saw have that accident, and Hobie, who we didn't see what, what happened there. But GT Alex, your race winner in the end there, coming through the field to win the race under all sorts of pressure from Spiner. A big shout out to Spiner as well. Kept it very, very, very clean. I maybe, I maybe argue a little bit too clean in the grand scheme of it, but clean all the same. So a big shout out for that. Scourge gets your fastest lap there, a 116.2. Um, 12 seconds solo finish time and split one.
there you have it. There was a lot of fighting in that one as well. Uh, Murray, I was leading at that point. Well, uh, it's good to hear. I hope you all enjoyed it in terms of the races. We have two more races to come, though, folks. Two more. We've had two fantastic races, and the grids are just as close in the remaining two races. We'll be having split three and split four. And uh, my voice is going to die, I think. So I'm going to go grab some water and go to the toilet, of course, as well. Um, so you will see some setup changes happening in the background as well, of course. Um, but that is your split two done and dusted for now. I'm going to take a little break. It's going to be about three and a half minutes like it was last time. I recommend you go to the toilet, get a drink, get some food uh, and prepare yourself for some more fantastic action with split number three. I've got 30 minutes if you want to spill your mind Give me all your reasons to why I should take my time Used to have forever but you never kept that much back with a lot of water down me <laughs> i can tell you that much wow what racing we've had actually we need to get the uh, correct bar on there there we go split three there for you so we are looking at split three now and uh, we'll go through deliveries once again <clears throat> um oh i can breathe i can breathe um but we do have another two fantastic races coming up for you two fantastic races so obviously split three again they're covered literally by milliseconds or thousands should i say thousands uh, for the reserve there are some reserves in this as i've said there there was somebody setting up a reserve um <clears throat> uh, a reserve list and uh, yeah we'll if you want to go and race in that sorry not set up a reserve list i can't get my words out set, set up a reserve race if you want to do that there you go Whew. Job done. I'd take longer breaks. Yeah, well, as I say, this is the first one, so there may some be, be some production issues, which is the goal here is to, you know, just try and get it all smooth as a whistle. 
Helps it being with the first one. We don't have that much in terms of championship information uh, or being able to do other stuff like that. There's a lot more stuff coming or in the works, should I say, for this in the future as well. So we're actually uh, advancing a bit further ahead of schedule than normal. Yeah, it's an unofficial race, the Split 5 race. Uh, we're not covering the Split 5. We've got four splits to race today. This is split number three, of course. Uh, so let's start talking about the drivers, of course. So we have Jaeger in here. <clears throat> How many British drivers do you need? Well, they're being led by a German at the moment in Jaeger. Let's have a look at the livery. As, uh, just head towards the left hand there. Here we go. Good little look at the livery. We've got the skull on there as well. Now, there is a livery competition, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on, of course, um, because you'll see why. You will see why, as uh, we are now going to look at the next player. Sorry, I was just uh, looking at something there on my schedule. Look at Frosty here. Frosty the snowman. We actually have NHS on there and the police, the Popo, the 5 What else are they called? Um, obviously, I have full respect to the police at the moment. They're under all sorts of uh, pressure and strains in the world. I mean, I, I don't get why people would harm the police in any way, to be honest. They're humans like all of us. Um, and like seeing people chuck stuff at the police, it's just like, why? What's the point? So, it's very frustrating, but um, even so... It's nice to see Frosty supporting the police. The fuzz. The fuzz. Uh, me and my mum always have a laugh when we're in the car. We're always like, hey, she's over here, she's over here. The Rosers. Reminds me of The Bill. The Bill's a ITV program that uh, was uh, involved the police. I used to watch it as a kid. Uh, let's have a look at Monte's livery now. This is a very, like, class livery. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if you look at it, gold and white. <clears throat> I, think, I think there might be two in here, actually. Um, if I have a look at uh, the police, yes, the police. Um, if we have a look at uh, the list of competitors, no, we'll have a golden white one in the next one as well. Um, I can never remember who's in what split now. So there's Monte for you. In fact, I know a livery we're going to jump to now. The Iron Brew livery of TT Base, one of our super VIPs in the community. Absolutely superb. Uh, the amount uh, TT Base has contributed towards the community. Absolutely just unbelievable stuff. So I, I thank TT Base all the time. Um, we have a few of those in chat as well. But we got the Iron Brew livery. I don't, I've not had Iron Brew in years, actually. In years. Uh, right, so we've looked at... We haven't looked at W1s. Even though we're on W1 initially, we didn't actually talk about the livery. So it's a very bright livery here. The uh, teal, green, blue, yellow, red. It's all on there, to be honest with you. All on there. I hate Ambry. I've not tried it in a while. As we jump to even Steven. What a camera transition that was. Um, so, through we go. It's black. It's got a little bit of red on there. We've got Michelin on the back. We've got GoPro. Ambry is really hard to get in the USA. Is it? I don't actually. I didn't actually realise that. Never even thought about it, to be honest with you. The bill. Great racing and old TV. Exactly. <laughs> so half the people in this chat will have no idea what I'm doing there, but it's the Bills theme tune. Uh, as we jump to uh, Zach Ave here with the pink machine. I'll tell you what I just bought from Amazon recently. Uh, Gamer. So if you never watched the film Gamer, it involves Gerard Butler. Um... I, you can't watch it anywhere, apparently. I can't find it anywhere. You couldn't even buy the Blu-ray. I managed to get hold of a Blu-ray. Uh, but people were trying to charge 30, 40 quid for it. I managed to find one for a quid out of nowhere. But, um, yeah, it's very hard to get. Uh, but, yeah. So, there's Zachary's livery. I'm not actually sure what the pattern is on top of it. Oh, there's... Uh, I didn't even see that, who that was then that was, was going off. Uh, Mizen was off there. Right, okay. Who have we missed here? Aldi. We've not seen Aldi's livery. Let's have a look at Aldi's. So the same livery as uh, Trevor Nix. Obviously, it's a team livery there. It's nice to see a team represent themselves here. Oh, really, Vagabond? That's interesting. Yeah, gamer. I actually enjoy the film, to be honest. I enjoy a lot of sci-fi films. It's just my, uh, my cup of tea. And uh, who else have we not had a look at yet? Swar Guy! We've not had a look at Swar Guy. Who's got the Playboy livery? Now, obviously, Playboy is within the rules. Uh, obviously, we have limitations on liveries. Playboy is fine. 
We just don't want actual naked people on cars. That's where we draw the line. Playboy is absolutely fine. Advertising. So happy days with Swar Guy. I did that for Lewis's special event, of course. Um, but uh, Swar Guy doing it here as well. Fair play, Swar Guy. Right, let's go down this list. Who have we not seen? Who's in P9? Raffo! We haven't looked at your livery, my friend. Let's have a look at this. We've got blue Interceptor on the back. Tijani Gamer with SimCity with real people. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's literally it. SimCity with real people. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. The flashback to the MX-5 Playboy livery. Um, it, it, it basically, uh, those in prison get controlled, I think, or the poor get controlled. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'd say it's a good film, really good film. And then they meet each other and stuff. It's kind of cool. Um, right, let's have a look. Oh, we got uh, Lorne on the cob, and I think I may have said your name wrong in one of my videos. To be honest with you, Lorne. So I apologise. Let's have a look at your livery. It looks like teal from here, but we're in the shade. Yeah, Monte with 16.8. But this shows you, okay, so the fact Monte's got 16.8 shows you how critical qualifying is and how people can get it so wrong or so right. 16.8 would be in top split. We're in split three now. Split three. But honestly, the qualifying was so close. You will see that again shortly. Uh, right, let's have a look further back. Oh, Luco, we haven't had a look. We have a Heineken livery here, folks. So the uh, Heineken livery. Looks awesome. Shout out Luco for that one. I so say we do have a livery competition. So once everybody's used their livery at least once in a in a race, they can actually enter that into livery competition. So last year, for those that remember all the way back to Mini Madness last year, Super Dragon was the winner of the competition there. So Super Dragon won and uh, literally got a trophy sent to Australia. Which is uh, fantastic, to be honest with you. Right, somebody we haven't seen yet. And I know we haven't seen it, because I know about it. It's the Dairy Lee Machine. It's Psycho Killer 69 <laughs> What a name. <laughs> oh, dear. It's Heine Welsh. Uh, well, you've lost me now, PJ. You've lost me. But uh, yes, even so, Heine Welsh. I actually do need to take a, a half register here, folks. So give me one moment. It should be fine. Um, yes, I'll, I'll sort it out in just a second. Right, so what we will do, we've had a look at all the liveries. Let's jump now to a little bit of a track guide, a bit more info about the circuit, because while I've I said that we are racing here, let's find out a little bit more about the circuit. Unfortunately, someone's just left there, so hopefully they will be returning shortly. Uh, but even so, let's have a look at that uh, now. Welcome then to Blue Moon Bay Infield A, a fantastic circuit, one of my favourite circuits in Gran Turismo. It's why it featured in last year's Mini Madness and is also featured in this year's Fugu Frenzy. Hopefully you've already seen some fantastic action when you see this video, uh, but hopefully we've seen the three, four, five wides that this circuit actually offers us. Now in terms of the circuit, let's have a look at it in details now. So it's located in the United States and it has a length of 3.4 kilometres, otherwise that is 2.1 miles. It's rounded up there for you. In terms of corners, there are 10 corners on the circuit and it has an absolutely stonkingly long straight here of 1060 meters and there are no elevation changes at all except when you jump on and off the oval. Now we jump off the oval at turn one which has been highlighted in yellow for you there, the whole is set to on. Very tricky corners to get right, under braking the car will like to wiggle there, the Greddy Fugu Z, so you have to be very careful, you'll notice brake balance is towards the front. You then have a fast left hander again at the end of sector one, another tricky corner, uh, easier than the others but you can still run quite deep there and get the rest of the sector two wrong essentially which starts with a 90 degree right hander. Very tricky corner, you can run very wide there so just be careful of that and then you've got a really long run to the hairpin. Outbreak yourself even remotely slightly, you'll be on the marbles and into the barrier in no time. We then have a second hairpin, which is a double apex, at the end of sector two. Very hard to get right, you want to rotate the car and just get out of there as fast as humanly possible into sector three, which has been highlighted in green for you. The fast left, not, sort of, not even 90 degrees, just a bit more open than that, onto the oval. Very tricky to get right, you'll see a lot of people in the barriers there. If you get it right, as we saw with LZR Jamas, you will nail an absolutely quality lap or a very good run on somebody else up in front of you. That is a little bit of a quick guide to Blue Moon Bay in Field A and some of the key stats here. As I say, a very, very fantastic circuit in my opinion. Very good course made by Gran Turismo. Let's jump back to the live lobby now uh, and let's get ready and ready to go for some more Fugu Frenzy action. 
Right, welcome back folks. We are just waiting for one individual. They did just disconnect. Hopefully they are returning shortly. Um, in fact, let me just have a look at the lobby here. Obviously, I'm doing the setup as well, so we're just waiting for them to reappear. So let's just have a quick gander. Um, I will have a look around. So, so apologies for the slight delay here. I didn't actually put in Discord that Split 3 was open, but uh, hopefully they are returning. Some funny stuff in Discord, of course. Uh, ah, TV's just shut off uh, for even Steven. So we'll, do, we'll just give him a moment. So go get a drink, folks. i say get some food as well. Make sure you return to the PC or TV. Uh, what Discord channel should drivers be watching? So if you're a driver, we're, we have a Fugu Frenzy section. So as if you're in that section, you will see all the threads on there. Uh, the format of the championship. So there are six rounds in terms of the championship. Four of those count towards your final score. So exactly the same as Mini Madness. So you can do all six rounds. Um, you can qualify for all six rounds anyway. Um, but as long as you enter or quali try and qualify for four of those rounds, it's fine. <clears throat> But uh, we do then have uh, um, issues because uh, the, the whole point of this championship is I want people to be semi-committed about the championship. Uh, we don't want to see people qualify for a race, do a race, to say they do this race now, split three, and then quit and go, oh, I did rubbish in that race, I'm not doing it anymore. Because that's then bad on the people who wanted to race who are then in reserve. Oh, cheers, Gary Hornet. I'm glad you are enjoying it. Uh, I'd say there's a lot more to come with this stuff. You know, it's obviously like the first run through I've ever done with this stuff. So, uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for future stuff because it can only get better. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that's the whole idea. So you have four championship rounds that count out of the six. Uh, we visit various circuits and you will just qualify the week before and then you basically get graded up in a split and then you race a split as we've been doing tonight. Hey, let's jump on somebody else here. We've been following that uh, a car too much. Here we go. Look at that. W1 at 16.8. Monte just ahead. In fact, how close are we are. TT base with a 16.8 as well. Wow, these people are close. This is unbelievable stuff. So we'll just give even Steven. Um... Yeah, that's no worries. Uh, you're sorry if you hear typing now. Unfortunately, his TV's just decided to start playing up, which is really, really annoying for uh, even Steven, I imagine, just at the wrong time there. Uh, it, it will get better and better, trust me. Some of the stuff you, you have not seen yet, trust me. Um, uh, the, 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 big, the big catcher here, of course, was the grid, the grid walk. Um, now, obviously, I don't make all these graphics, so... Uh, like, literally, you might go, well, why aren't you using the liveries on the grid walk, for example? Um, I basically try and find graphics and edit them to my own. So I will pay for a license for some of these. Uh, like, a lot of these graphics, like the bottom, the bottom thing here, for example, it doesn't look anything like that in the in the graphic you will see or can purchase. So I edit it to my own. Designing these from scratch, I can do it, but it takes me an extra, what, three days, four days? So, you know, I try and be efficient as well as possible and... Um, we can have a look at Luco's livery again, actually, if you would like. Uh, let's go to nine. There we go. So that's what I kind of do. So the grid walk, for example. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story with the grid walk, okay? So you can get this, and it's just got helmets on and, and stuff like that. So obviously one thing with the channel, we use uh, Casanova Scotia as the, as the font. It's not the greatest font in the world, but it's a nice font that I like. Um, and I was playing about with it, and then I, I thought, oh, do you know what would be a good idea? Let's get a car on there. So I put the car in there just as a general picture, and then I realized I could edit the graphic to make the car look like it's on the grid, and I was like, oh my word, let's do that. So then I started doing that, and then I, my mind blew when it, the way it came out, and I was like, oh my word, if only I had enough time. If I did this full time, okay, I'll just put this out there now. If I did this full time, I would get every single person who qualified, I'd get their livery, and I'd put the livery in, and I'd make the grid look even better. Unfortunately, that adds like, um, well, so each car would take me like 20 minutes, so I'd, it's exponential increase, but even so, that's that's the whole idea in the end. Uh, as a Dutchman, I have to say that is not cool, even though I like the livery. Uh, want, want, want to get in Simboy in the lobby? If even, yes, we will be looking at doing that. Um, I, I've given even Stephen just a few more minutes just to see if he can get the TV working. 
uh, I do feel bad for, for him because he was it's actually in the lobby as well. It wasn't like he wasn't in the lobby. So, uh, yeah. So that's the idea with the grid walk. Um, and, you know, in the future, maybe we can do that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I look for graphics. I make them my own. Um, you guys help me out as well. So we have Bazinga to thank for Fugu Frenzy logo. You will be seeing Bazinga later on. Uh, that bottom right side there that you can see, absolutely fantastic logo, honestly. Um, it's superb. A few people put in a load of suggestions. Uh, we've, of course, got to thank Rappy GT for his efforts with the uh, photograph as well that, that, that he did. Um, that's unbelievable as well, uh, what Rappy did with that photo to get all those cars on. A bit annoying that Gran Turismo didn't feature it in their escapes because it's an unbelievable escape, in my opinion. Um... Uh, so uh, yes, let's uh, let's find out what's uh, happening. So what may happen is your grid for, your grid walk for four uh, for event number four, split four. That's coming up after. Uh, maybe very different to what it actually is, but uh, we can still go through some of the times. Um, you'll see the times on there as well. We're just waiting for a final update um, for even Steven, and then we will kick off. Um, so apologies for the delay folks, but uh, these things happen, you know, we have mechanical issues uh, accordingly We see them in PD's live events uh, And obviously the goal with this is to give you an absolutely epic championship an absolutely epic event and something on the production level of PD If I can get it even remotely close to that um, I'm happy because they spend a million pounds and I don't have a million pounds. So if I'm even remotely close, I'm happy um, Right, let's just find out um, Plugged it back in. Um, so we'll just see if even Stephen can get back in there. <laughs> I have no taste. So times are very close here. Very, very close. In fact, let's have a quick gander at the old times here. Just a, 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 have a brief look here. So everybody is much faster than their qualifying time. It shows you how critical qualifying actually is. Okay. I think every, every single person is faster than their qualifying time. Well, they spend over a million, actually. But remember, that's all sorts as well. So that's prizes, getting equipment there, and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, my, my goal here is just to give you an, a, a show, a really good show, uh, while also presenting. Um, fortunately, even Steven can't get back in. Um, just due to the TV. Um, so, Slim Boy, you're up. Uh, but yeah, so my, my idea is to give you entertainment, give you a bit, put effort into you guys. It's a community championship. The community don't really get anything. So, you get all the world tour drivers going. You know, I, I've, I've had my fair share of world tours, etc. But you guys, the community, don't get really anything from Gran Turismo other than the odd race and being punted. So, the idea here is to give you, the community, the best championship I can give you. If I can do that and give you a nice little feature in terms of the program, I'm happy. Hopefully, you're happy. Um, yeah, so even Stephen, if you're listening, if you, you can do a switcheroo after, that's no problem. Oh, right, so Slim Boy is joining. So Slim Boy would have qualified in P number one. So it was uh, P1 in terms of split four. So th what this does is it gives Slim Boy an advantage to get more points in Split 3. So, Split 4 winner, uh, in fact, I will tell you, uh, just to give you an idea, Split 4 winner would have got 35 points. Slim Boy might not have even won that split, okay? Um, so, coming into Split 3, the bottom position is uh, 28 points. Sorry, there's a slight difference, here, actually, in terms of points. It's top, bottom 4 get outscored by the winner of the previous split. So, um... If Slim Boy comes in 38th is what? <laughs> I'm working back. 13, 13, 12th, 11th, 10th or higher, he actually improves the score. Otherwise, it's a pretty close score. So, nothing to lose, stuff to gain. Or a tiny bit to lose, more to gain. That's the whole idea behind this. Um, right, we are just going to get that sorted in terms of the grid, folks. Sorry if you can hear clicking. My mouse is actually a very annoying mouse. There we go. Right, okay, so let's uh, sort out the grid for you here. Nope, nope, don't want that. Make sure you don't start the race, Tidge, you pleb. 
Right, so Slim Boy's at the back. Let me just check the grid for this now, just because it's slightly complicated. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, so we've got Zakave, we've got Lorne on the cob. I hope I'm saying that right. Apologies if I'm not. Um, it would have been even Steven, so it's not even Steven now. So it's Luco, Myzen, W1, Monte, Swar Guy, TT Base, Aldi. Raffo, Psycho Killer, and then Slim Boy. So your grid walk for this one is going to be slightly different, folks. Um, just FYI, because obviously we've had even Steven drop out, unfortunately, just due to a technical issue, uh, and we've had uh, Slim Boy come in. Um, the production might be good, but I no way can edit that as fast as humanly possible because it uses some data in the background. But even so, let's have a look at the grid, uh, and then we'll begin the race. Welcome to your split three grid walk then and our pole position we have Jaeger and P2 is Frosty. On row two we have Zakve and Lonio on the cob. Row three, even Steven and Luco there, same times as well. Row four, Mizen and W1. Row five we have Monte and Swarguy and on row six we have TT Base and Aldi. Finally row seven, it's Raffo and Psycho Killer, that is split three. So we are getting ready here for the race. Thank you again, Murray, for your help with that. I was very much appreciated. So here we go. Oh, thank you very much, Calder. So we are ready for the race. Fingers crossed. Everything goes to plan here. Jaeger on pole. Frosty. Sakave, Alorno. And then we have the difference in the grid slightly because we had one drop out, unfortunately. So let's all get ready for this race. Split number three here. The third race of the night. Jaeger on pole position. What is going to happen here? We've got the police in P2 with Frosty. Oh, we've got a jump start by Zakave. A huge jump start by Zakave. Zakave is going to go all the way to the back of the field. What a massive jump start that was. Zakave will be kicking himself here as we head now down towards turn number one. Frosty's in the lead there. What a fantastic start by Frosty. Unbelievable start there as we go. Line turn through there. And uh, wow, what a crazy start. Oh, we've got a spin. We have our spin. That's the first spin of the day. I'm not sure who that was, actually, as we're just on Jaeger at the moment. In towards the left. Oh, there's another, another bit of contact there as well. Oh, we need to calm this down a bit. But Luco from P5 up into P2. Happy days for Luco as they continue on through that corner. We'll try and have a look at what happened there in the replay shortly. We've just got a lot of action at the moment. It's there. Two, three, wide in towards the hairpin here. Oh, Raffo gets involved as well. Goes for a little bit of diamond psycho killer there. As uh, through they go. Remember, we do have a penalty system in play. Uh, it's very much the case of... Um, these penalties will hit you harder than your race results, so uh, people do have to be careful of this. Uh, we had two people banned last year, I think, uh, from actions, but of course this is the first round. Uh, as we get down in the splits, obviously the driver, driver rating goes down a little bit, um, so there is expected to be a little bit more contact. It is a contact-free championship, but even so... Uh, we continue on with the racing and everything will calm down shortly as uh, we continue on Lonnie on the cob uh, trying to move on Aldi Raffo's in there as well as they head towards turn number one in towards the breaking zone we go there's a move by Lorne on Aldi I think Aldi got tapped out wide there I can't actually see Aldi oh Aldi's off as well now I could do with seeing who spanned at the turn number one here and having a real good detail of it but I'll tell you what, Frosty, 2.3 seconds up the road. He's just left everybody for dead. Then it's Luko, Swaga in P3, Jaeger's in P4 there. Lorne in P5, Raffo P6. Uh, this has been a bit of a rough start. I, I fully suspect I'll be investigating this one after. Uh, so very much going to be provisional results. So if you see 2-3 wide there in towards the hairpin. Slimboy up to P10. That's the position he needs there, Slimboy. P10 and he's actually profited from even Steven's technical issue. So we'll see what happens with Slimboy. Uh, elbows are very much out on this one. Um, as I say, we can investigate these races, uh, but even so, I imagine it will calm down. Lots of cars all at once. Um, now, who span? Who was the spinner? I'm going to guess it was Mizen. Let's see if we can have a look at the old replay there. So it just hits a barrier. Um, can we get on board here? Uh, can you let me on board, please? Well, let me on board. Oh, there we go. Who was the spinner? It was Mizen. Oh, was, oh, okay, there's a lot more to that than we saw. Can we get a, a different angle? 
And then we'll jump back towards the raisin. So can we see from this angle? So what happened here? Oh, it's the slightest of taps from the inside. One of the pink cars there. Slightest of taps actually pushed somebody else out. And that was into uh, Meisen there. So a bit of an interesting incident, that one. One that we'll have to look at as well. Uh, but Frosty, Officer, Di <laughs> Officer Dipple in the lead. Oh, dear. We're going to have the police jokes now in all this one, aren't we? But Swagai P2, Luco P3. I think mean, that's actually a change of position there, isn't it? Uh, but Swagai is into P2. Jaeger still P4. We've got Lorne under all sorts of pressure from W1 here. And so we head towards the left-hander now. W1 on the inside. Oh, decides against it. And they're going to be slow through that corner now as we continue on to the oval. And we're going to have all sorts of slipstream here at the moment. TT Base has spun. Oh, really? Where's TT Base then? Oh, TT Base. That's unfortunate for you. Can we have a look at the replay? No, that's already happened, unfortunately. Uh, Frosty, three seconds up the road. Now, Frosty's just gone. Gone. All he has to do is chill now for another, what, 19 laps. And happy days. He's got the maximum points. Uh, one person I am very interested in is Slim Boy, who's up to P9 now. Fully profiting from this upgrade in terms of splits. Fully profited here as uh, we come through the double left. Oh, that's somebody off there. Who was that? Um, oh, my word. I've gone the wrong way here. Who was off? Oh, somebody was off. That looked like W1, I think. It was indeed. We'll have to have a look at the replay of that one. But W1 has uh, just gone to Narni there. Can we have a look at the replay? So W1 on the inside of Lorne here. Um, gets the job done. Carries too much speed and off into the grass. So we saw that with Johnny Wito. Exact same incident. Fortunately, W1 manages to survive. Brings it on very carefully there. Superb driving to keep that uh, that car out of an incident after that. So, uh, fair play to W1. But Luco back up into P2 now. Luco back up into P2. Sorry, I'm missing some of these moves, folks. I'm trying to keep up with all the action here. Lead is showing up PC plod. That is confirmed. But yes, Luco into P2 again. And then we have Swagai in P3. See Slipstream going on there. I think Monte's making a move further back there. No, it's Meisen on Zakave. That's Meisen into the left hander. Gets it done on Zakave. So Zakave will remove that penalty throughout the race there. Nothing. Oh, hey, a bit of sideways there for Zakave as well. But that's Meisen getting the move done there. Let's jump back to. I keep jumping to P1, but it's P2 where the battle is at the moment. 3.7 seconds. Um, oh, Luco gets it all wrong through that corner. Oh, that's somebody else making a move there as well. That's Lorne on Jaeger. Lorne going for the move. Oh, a little bit of a tap there. In towards the hairpin we go. He's only going to get the job done. Backs out of it for now with Jaeger. Into the right hander we go. And uh, some moves further back there as well with Monte and Raffo. They were side by side into the hairpin. Raffo still looking. Backs out of it a little bit there. Backs out of it for now. But uh, yeah, full on elbows out in this lobby. Full on elbows out. As I say, there is a penalty system in place. So drivers do know this. It is in the rules. We have applied penalties in the past. Some severe penalties as well, I must say. Um, so let's uh, let's hope there's no penalties. And it's just a little bit of touchy-feely throughout the race. And a bit of pinball physics just causing a bit of issue there. Right, up ahead in P2, Luco. With a 4 tenth gap to Swagai there. A line of stern there as well. In towards turn number one. And uh, Luco, oh, a little bit of oversteer. Oh, a big oversteer moment there for Lorne. But could have a run here on Jaeger, potentially, out the corner. Could have a run. It's two temps. It's now under two temps here. Lorne on Jaeger. Not quite going to get it done there. A little bit of a down on the brakes. Trying to get on the little... Oh, you're very close. Sorry, I'm making weird noises now. Uh, through the right hand, there we go. And Lorne again, looking to try and get the move done. Putting all sorts of pressure on Jaeger. Absolutely all sorts of pressure. Look at this for racing. Lorne in towards... The right-hander now. Jaeger's on the inside. Lorne on the outside. And Jaeger manages to stop it on the apex there. Lorne trying to get the oval up a little bit. Oh, side tap there. But they all catch it themselves. Lorne backs out of it. That's fair play. Good sportsmanship. In towards the left-hander. Uh, how does one join the championship? Check out the description. There's a PDF there. It's got all the information you will ever need. As uh, we continue into the left-hander. It looked like Swag. I was all... Oh, that's close to the barrier for Jaeger. Very close to the barrier. Does hit it, in fact, I think. Uh, Lorne's going to be all over the back here. Monte's coming into the picture as well for this P4 battle. Luco's 
Nah, Luca's got a bit of a gap there to Suarez. That's not a move that's on the cards at the moment. Uh, let's go a bit further back. I think there's a move there for P... Is it P8? Uh, in fact, Slim Boy's up to P7. Slim Boy on a mission. Started P14 up to P7. Uh, Psycho having a shocker. Now, I've not actually been paying attention to Psycho. What's happened to Psycho then? Murray's obviously in as a steward here. Um... So, uh, let's have a look. Oh, scrapes a barrier there. Having a race with Aldi at the moment. Now, I see Aldi's back in the mix again after that incident at Tour 1 on lap number 2, I think it was. Um, we'll have to see what happens with that incident as well. Right now, the battle for P2. I just saw Swire Guy and Luco on the map. I saw arrows very close to each other, and they were indeed, because Luco and Swire Guy are at each other's throats here, and the gap to the lead is nearly 5 seconds. That's why guy goes down the inside of Luco. Luco's on the grass. Luco is on the grass. That's going to be dirty tyres there. That's guy up into P2. Uh, Luco could be under all sorts of trouble from Lorne here, who's actually got past Jaeger in all of this. Well, oh, into the barrier there for Luco. Luco's off. Luco is off into the barrier. Luco going all the way down the order. Oh, poor Luco. Poor, poor Luco. He gets a little bit of a penalty to boot there as well. Poor, poor Luco. And uh, going all the way back down to P13. So Lorne now up into P3. Lorne will be happy. And uh, Monte looking to get the move done on Jaeger as well. Round the outside. Monte, superb effort there. Slim Boy up to P6 there. Slim Boy, shout out for Slim Boy. Comes in as, uh, gets upgraded to the next split. And actually going to really improve on the points here at the moment. The Slim Boy looks to get a move done on Jaeger. Doesn't quite work out for now. In towards the left hand. That's starting at the back. Really worked out for Slim Boy, didn't it? Avoided uh, all the incidents and just made his way through the field and looks to get the cutback done here. What a move this is. Oh, what a move by Slim Boy. Going to be on the inside for the hairpin. Monte's done a bit of a slow right-hander there as well. In towards the hairpin we go. It's going to be three wide into the hairpin. Slim Boy gets the car stopped. Up into P5. What a move by Slim Boy. A shout out. For oh, Monte's gone all sideways into the grass. Just catches it as well. Oh, he's getting close here with these drivers. Uh, P4 battle all the way to P9 now. Uh, but Monte leads out from Slim Boy. And again, what a drive by Slim Boy, I've got to say. Uh, Slim Boy going for podium. Imagine that for a result. Uh, it shows you how much qualifying is actually worth. Let's go a bit further back. We have a battle here for P11. Psycho Killer and Aldi. They're still racing along here. Luco is in that slipstream, so we'll join that battle soon. And I think TT Base is there as well. Yes, that's good to see. Everybody back in the mix in some form of battle. That's what I like to see in this championship. Let's jump all the way up to that P3 as lorne has got a big penalty. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, that will come off during the race. That's usually a barrier contact somewhere. Uh, but Swire Guy pushing on here. Monte's lost the slipstream of Lorne. And uh, this is where the main battle is, isn't it, at the moment? This battle for sort of P3, P4 sort of area. P5. Some boy under all sorts of pressure here from Jaeger. Jaeger was our pole sitter, remember? And Jaeger looking to try and get the move done. Not quite here. And uh, oh, Raffo. Uh, sorry, Raffo has gone defensive there. <laughs> I don't know what I was reading then. In towards the right hander we go. On the inside, W1 trying to go around the outside. This would be a superb move. It pulls off. Oh, W1 going for the move of the century here around the outside. W1 gets it stopped. What a move by W1. A round of applause there for W1. Absolutely superb driving around the outside at the hairpin. Saw the advantage there with the uh, sort of cluster there of driving and around the outside and gets, gets dead. Oh, hits a wall though. No, oh, dear me. It's all going backwards now for W1. Does the move there, but uh, then do all sorts of pressure from Raffo now. Gonna have a bit of slipstream though. I think W1 might keep it. We'll have to wait and see. Raffo towards the inside. Gonna have to pull back in for now, I think, is Raffo. Um, so W1 does keep that position for now. As a. Yeah, you get down to P6, Slim Boy P5. Oh, look at, the, look at the oversteer there by Slim Boy. And uh, Jaeger coming back at Slim Boy. Not quite going to work out for now. Meisen's on the, sorry, on the move there on Raffo. Oh, down the inside. Gets the move done there as well. So Meisen up into P8 for now. And uh, Raffo going down the order at the moment. Going to have to calm down a little bit and uh, refocus himself. Zachary coming back into this fight as well. Uh, who's at the back there? TT Base had another issue somewhere. Another issue for TT Base. That is unfortunate. Uh, let's jump further back here. Jaeger now under all sorts of pressure from Meisen. Jaeger's going backwards here. 
really going backwards. Jaeger on the inside now of Meisen for this left. Oh, Meisen out on the marbles there. That's not going to be very helpful at all. Rafa potentially looking to get the move done. No, not quite. So Meisen keeps that P8 for now into the left. We go. Anybody going to hit the barrier this time? Obviously, it's kind of critical to not do it. Oh, a little bit of a scrape there for Meisen. Nothing major at the moment. Let's jump to P5. That's Slim Boy Fat, who's going to be all over the back of Monte as uh, we enter lap number 11. Lap number... What the heck? Where's the race gone? Where has the race guy done? <laughs> what on earth? Oh, here we go. Uh, so in towards the left we go. We'll have a look at the gap shortly uh, for you, Rapid. And uh, Simboy just gets that turn one a little bit wrong this time. Oh, further back. W. No, yeah, you got under all sorts of pressure on Meisen. Still, Meisen runs a little bit wide here. That's going to bring Rafo into the mix, potentially. Meisen's going to have dirt on his tyres here. Dirt on his tyres for sure. You have to be very careful in towards this left. Oh, you can see that. Rafael's going to go for the move. What a move by Rafael. Very opportunistic driving there. Oh, Meisen comes back at him. Oh, a little bit of contact. Oh, he's gone round. Oh, there's a huge crash. There's a huge, huge, huge crash. Dakave's involved as well. Everybody's involved. Cycle killer up to P8 from that crash. Luca's going back involved. Oh, dear me, it all went wrong there with that instant. We'll try and have a look at that one again. We had a bit of a frame freeze there. I'm not sure what happened with the PlayStation. The PlayStation was even going nuts at that one. Uh, but my word, my, my word, that was all sorts of double treble F. Right, what is kicking off now? So Frosty's got a six-second gap to Swargai, basically. So Frosty's having a happy days uh, moment there. As uh, Swargai is your P2. We'll have a look at that incident again shortly. Uh, it's catching there. That was a faster lap. Uh, Lorne very close to Swargai in uh, P number three. Monte, P4 with Slimboy in P5. And W1 in P6. P7 for Jaeger. Who has uh, now uh, lost Meisen completely with that incident. Uh, Psycho Killer. We've got Aldi in there as well. So Aldi will be pretty happy with the fact that there was an incident. Get involved in the thick of the action again. But Meisen, Meisen, Meisen. We'll have a little bit of a look at that one. As uh, we go into the left here. As uh, we come through there. And uh, looks like Aldi's going to get this position potentially. Yes, decides to get side by side this time through that right hander. Let's have a look at the uh, the incident again then. So uh, we come through here. They're both run wide. We know Meisen had uh, dirt on his tyres at this point in time. So a bit of oversteer. I think a bit of oversteer from both. And then Ruffo, Ra Raffo can't catch it. And then Zakave tries to avoid it. And I think it was just a mixture of all three of them there. So Meisen and Aldi are still at it here. I'm going to keep that tagged on that replay. We're going to have another look at that shortly. Um, but just have a look see if any moves go on here. No, they're all fine so far. Uh, look at that P5 battle. Uh, in fact, Slimboy's lost out to W1 somewhere in this lap. Slimboy's actually dropped down a position uh, during all of that. Uh, let's actually jump back to Meisen again. I'm more interested in this and what happened here. So we're on board with Meisen now. Oh, so Jaeger hit the barrier. That was a Constantino effect as well. So there was more to this that met the eye. So, ah, yes. So there was a mixture of all sorts there. Raffo ran too deep. Meisen tried to run... Sorry, Meisen ran too deep as well. Tried to avoid the incident. Uh, then we had Zakave trying to avoid the incident as well. So there was lots of avoidance there. And it just turned into a massive, massive incident. We'll try and have a look at it from Zach. Oh, Meisen's off again. Oh, Meisen's going to have dirt on his tyres. Aldi's going to go for the move here. Oh, backs out of it there, does Meisen. Backs out of it completely. Aldi's going for it here. Uh, Meisen's going to have to be careful with dirt on the tyres, though. Oh, we see Luco going for a move there as well on GT Raffo. So it's topsy-turvy this race so far. Real topsy-turvy. Uh, as we head towards the left-hander, we will have another look from Zakave's perspective, who's all the way down in P13 now. Uh, really, really, really unfortunate for uh, Zakave. Uh, but we are going to have a look at Zakave's perspective. I'm just having a look to see if anyone hits a barrier here because that's obviously a move and only Rafa slightly in the background. Right, let's have a look from Zakave's perspective now at that incident. So he's going to be further back here. So you can still see it. And you see that barrier hit there by Jaeger, which was critical in all of this. You see that side by side, very hard corners go side by side. They both run too deep here. So they both run tight. There's a slight tag there. Rafa touches the grass, which hits Spears Meisen in. Oh, Zakave wasn't trying to avoid it. He clipped the grass himself. Wow, lots of different... Wow. Okay, so that actually wasn't a bad incident, the way I look at that. It, it wasn't a bad incident. And 8.5 seconds up the road here, Frosty. Uh, happy days for Frosty. So it wasn't a bad incident. It was just little, little mistakes into a big incident. Big, big incident. So, you know, it's nice to see that it wasn't 
like a huge driver error. It was just the fact that a tiny error with tiny error with another tiny error and three cars went got wiped out basically. So uh, a <laughs> sympathy crash. Yeah, Zachary felt sorry for uh, the the other drivers there. So uh, yeah, we will experience crashes. Here we had one, so we move on with the race. Now we have a battle for P2 here. We've got Swagai, Lorny, Monte's in this as well, and this W1. Uh, Slimboy has dropped off a little bit now. So Slimboy's lost all that speed he had earlier on. Yes, but we can't use that word in, uh, in, in the actual stream there, Scourge. Uh, so W1 at the back of this a P2 battle. So lots to make up here for W1. Everyone wants to be on the podium, of course, as I say. Lots of points enough. As Swagai goes defensive against Lorny here into turn number one. And uh, going to keep that position for now, I think. Oh, as Lorny goes for the cutback here. Oh, my word, what a move this is by Lorny. Gets it done. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. What a brilliant move that is. That's how you actually perform a quality move there. But Swagai comes back at Lorny. And Swagai's going to get it here. Oh, and a beautiful comeback as well. Beautiful, beautiful comeback. Uh, we've got a huge crash with Aldi. Thank you, Murray Moles. You're keeping on top of this. I've just uh, slapped the replay on. Uh, we will have a look at that shortly because we're just enjoying some of the action here with Swagai, Lorne, Monte, uh, and W1 in there as well. W1 looking to put pressure on here in terms of Monte. In towards the left hander they go. And... Uh, uh, still line of stern there. We'll just have a look at the barrier just in case anybody uh, hits the barrier. I'm assuming Aldi lost it himself. We will have a look though. Uh, okay, let's have a look at Aldi then. I'm assuming he's way back here. Oh, wow. We do jumped to Aldi and Zakave here in a bit of a battle. So let's have a look at what happened to Aldi. So Aldi goes for the move on Psycho Killer into turn number one. Oh, slight contact there. So it went a bit too deep. Too deep. Yeah, too deep. And uh, off into the barrier. And dirt on the tyres. You can catch this car, but with dirt on the tyres, I think it gets a bit too difficult. So that's what happened to Aldi there. So it's one guy lowering it. Oh, W1 up, actually up into P4. He's just got the end of that. A move on Monte at turn number one. W1 up into P4 now, showing uh, ERT what they're made of here. In towards the right hand. Uh, hope you're wearing clean socks, you pleb. Uh, I am wearing clean socks, actually. I always wear clean socks. I've got white socks again, which is lucky. Oh, wow, that's deafening in my ear. Uh, but uh, he was... Oh, the move for P2. Lorne round the outside of Swagai. Lorne round the outside of Swagai. In towards the left they go. And Lorne nails it. And uh, Swagai coming back here with a cut back. Oh, this is dangerous. This is very dangerous. Can W1 capitalize here? In towards the left-hander we go. Lots of oversteer there from the drivers. Lorne going for the cutback on the left-hander. W1 going around the outside as well. Oh, we're going three wide. We are going three wide through here. And we continue on. My ears. Sorry if I just deafened everybody. I hope not. But we continue on the three wide heading towards turn number one. W1 up in the... I think in the prime position here potentially... Swagai keeps it. Mar uh, Mon Martai? Monte keeps, uh, gets a bit sideways. Lorne goes for the cutback. Potentially can get the job done here as well. No, he's not. W1 up, up another position. W1 making some places here as well. Unbelievable stuff here from all these drivers. Brilliant racing so far. Brilliant, brilliant racing uh, as they come through here. Now, P5 is Monte. P6, Slim Boy. Maybe going to get back in the action. Jaeger, or pole sitter. All the way down to P7 and not really gaining at the moment. We then have Meisen who... What's happened to Meisen here? Uh, Meisen's stuck on the brakes for some reason. Not sure what's going on there. We'll uh, see if we can have a replay. So, through the right-hander. And then we head towards the left. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Wow, okay, yeah, big mistake there by Meisen. Turned in, thought Psycho Killer had gone. Hadn't, he's waiting for Psycho Killer there. He's waiting for him. So good sportsmanship conduct there by Meisen. Very, very unfortunate for Psycho Killer. Very unfortunate that. It's nice to see the good sportsmanship though that we're seeing here. Oh, somebody else has just gone off there. I just saw that. Um, we'll have a look at that shortly. So I think that was Aldi who just went off. You like your ears being destroyed. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So, nice to see. There we go. There's a change of position that's going to happen here. 
So we're going to have a three-way fight, I imagine, with Psycho Killer, TT Base, and Mizen. Right, let's have a look at what happened to Aldi in all of this one. We will actually get back to the big battle going on um, up towards the front here. So Aldi comes around this left-hander. I put earplugs for this occasion. Yes! That's exactly what you want to do. Right, okay, so let's continue in towards the left. Oh, I just clipped this barrier there. It's activated with a lovely little move because of that. Right, here we go. Whoa, wow, we caught the end of that. My word, what's kicking off there? Monte now going to give that place back, it looks like, maybe? I don't know. Um, wow, okay, so we've got action all on the show. Slim Boy's back in the mix. Jaeger's coming back in the mix as well. Um, we'll have a look at what happened there, because I don't actually know what happened. And uh, we'll just follow this round. I'll see. I just want to, yeah, so Monte's giving that place back, which is fair enough. You know, shout out to Monte. Good sportsmanship contact. Oh, hey! That's what the radar's for there. <laughs> Let's have another look at what happened there. Wow, we're getting, we're getting all sorts of replays in this one. All right, so Monte down the inside of Lorny, up into the uh, hairpin here. Into the right-hander. Gets the job done. Oh, goes on the grass a little bit there. And then in towards the left. Oh, I actually don't think that was Monte's fault, if I'm honest. I don't think that was Monte's fault. He was very much, he was very tight on the inside there. Uh, I would argue that wasn't Monte's fault, but uh, even so, good sportsmanship like conduct by uh, Monte. I can't hear the TV anymore because the TV's just switched itself off. Thank you, TV. Sorry if this says no, no display just for a brief moment. Or oh, one piece of technical problem, the TV, which is changing. No signal for a brief moment. Da -da 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 -da. And we are back. Here we go. W1 is in P2 now. P2. So... Uh, W1 doing very well here in terms of positions. Uh, let's go to that P4 battle now with Lorny, Monte, Jaeger up there now. Jaeger's overtaking Slimboy during all of this. Uh, so through there they go. First, but I know my TV switching off. Bloody TV. Um, well, through the left-hander we go. We have to have some technical difficulties. PD get them. I mean, we've our, our, if our only technical difficulty is even Stephen having a TV issue and me having a TV issue, which is TV issues, happy days. But we head towards turn one here. Lonnie leading this P4 battle now. We've got actually groups of battles everywhere. Who is the solo driver in the middle of all of this? I think that's Luco. Luco's poor guy's on his own. But even so, he's actually made ground from obviously the, the uh, issue earlier on. Jumped from Raffo now under all sorts of pressure from Zachary. We've got Aldi in there as well. And then further back. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Here we have Mizen, Psycho Killer, and TT Base racing each other. Where did W1 start? That's a good question. I can tell you the answer of that on my uh, spreadsheet. W1 started in 36th place, which is 8th. Started 8th in all of this. Did uh, W1. So it's a very good race for W1 here. Slimboy has done the same sort of progress as well. Eight places for... Uh, actually, Simple has done slightly more here. Uh, he's actually done eight places overall. Uh, he's actually got past Jaeger again there as Slimboy. So, i say this has been very... Oh, Lorne is into the barrier. That's going to be Monte. A lovely little run there into P4. So, Monte gets that position. Is Frosty TRL Adam in disguise confirmed? I hope we got another... What is he? Daniel Abt uh, situation? I don't know. Uh, but we continue on. So, Monte gets P4 from Lorne there. Now, Slimboy is going to be catching at a fair pace of knots here, I imagine. No, not too much there. It's only going to get to three tenths of a second uh, as we hit that left-hander once again. Now, we've got a battle for P2. W1 and Swar guy, they're still at it here. In towards the left-hander. Wow, look at that oversteer there by W1. Really pushing on here. As we head towards the right-hander. Oh, and Swar guy's off into the grass. Dirty tires for Swar guy. No move going to be made there. Let's look at P4. Monte, Lorne, they're all so, so close as they head towards the hairpin here. And uh, what, what a four-way battle we've got going on here, folks. We've got battles for throughout the field. Slimboy looks for the move. Lorne goes defensive as well, under breaking. Lorne actually going for the move down the inside. Going to get the position as well. Oh, what a move that is. I'm going to have to have a look at that on the replay as we head towards the left-hander now. And uh, Lorne. Oh, oh, there was a bit of lag there then. A little bit of lag. Not sure what's going on there. Hopefully PSN behaves itself as we go through the left-hander. Calm down, PSN. Calm down. Right, let's have a look at this move. Uh, I actually need to go to Lorne. So let's have a look at this move down towards the hairpin here. So, um, 
I mean, does Monte, Monte outbreaks himself a little bit? It looks like it, which is how Lorne got the position there. Brilliant move. Absolutely fantastic effort there. So Lorne in P4 at the moment. Obviously, they're all fighting for these points. They really want to be fighting for that P3, but uh, that's six seconds up the road here. Uh, this is the biggest gap we've had. It's quite surprising, actually, but... Uh, We've had incidents throughout the field. There's Rafa and also the pressure from Zakave into turn number one here. Oh, look at that oversteer by Zakave there. Controlled oversteer, we'll call that. He's the new DK of the Fugu Frenzy world. Here's Zakave. And we go a bit further back again. We've got Psycho Killer, TT Base, and Meisen still in there. Little scrap at the rear of this field as uh, TT Base gets the move done on Meisen there down the inside. Uh, who's in P14? Aldi. What's happened to Aldi in all of this? Aldi's had a bit of a shocker here. Really unfortunate for Aldi. Hopefully we'll come back stronger in the next one. But your leader, Frosty. About to start the final lap here. 9.1 seconds up the road. Um, literally just gone. At the start, brilliant start and just left everybody for dead. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, we've got W1 in P2, P3 for Swar Guy, And then we've got P4 for Lorne at the moment, who has a significant gap to Monte. Uh, of half a second. That is significant down that straight. It's got to be about three tenths when you leave the uh, last corner there. So we've got P5 Monte, P6 Slim Boy, P7 Jaeger. Luco all on his own here, but has been catching that pack actually. Uh, fair pace or not, so shout out to Luco for all of that. Uh, P9 then, we've got Rafo and Zakave. As we head towards turn one, Rafo defensive on the inside. Zakave, oh, whoa, Zakave, oh my word, no way, no way, no way, are we, are we just seeing an outside, around the outside at turn one, have we just seen that, Zakave, oh my word, what a beautiful move, oh no, ruined, ruined, no, oh, unbelievable, that was, oh, meisen has gone off as well, Meisen's gone, Zakave's gone, they're all gone, who's that further back as well, TT Base has gone, Oh, it's all, it's all happening here. It's all happening. Oh. <laughs> right, we go to our winner, Frosty, there. P1. It's going to be P2 for W1. I did give Zachary the full commentator's curse there. W1, fair play with that result. Swagai P3 with the little spin over the line, or try to. It's P4 for Lorne on the cob there. P4 for Lorne into the barrier. We've got P5, Monty, 6 for Slimboy, 7 for Jaeger, 8 for Luco. Good comeback from Luco, to be fair. Shout out for that one. P9 is going to be Rafo. Oh, I feel for Zakave there. That was a superb move around the outside of turn one. And may maybe he just got too excited for then the next one. There, they're all gone. Psycho in P10. We've got Meisen in P11. Goes for the spin across the line there. P12 for TT Base, P13 for Zakave, and Aldi comes home in P14. That did escalate somewhere else, didn't it, towards the end of that one? My word. I think that's eight seconds slower than the previous split again. So, uh, I mean, these splits seem very, very accurate to qualifying then, but Frosty. What a dominating performance by Frosty there. Absolutely superb effort, my friend. Absolutely superb effort. Let's just save that replay and let's have a look at the provisional race results. I very much say this is provisional. Uh, we saw quite a few incidents in that one. Uh, but Frosty, your race winner there from W1 and Swagai. There, your podium finishes there. We then have Lorne on the card. Monte, Slimboy Fat. Now, Slimboy came from the back of the grid at 2p6. That was a good promotion to the next split and uh, happy days for Slimboy there. We then have Jaeger, Luco, Raffo, Psycho Killer, Meisen, TT Base, Zakave. And Aldi round out your 14 finishes for that one. That was a bit of an elbows out race. Uh, that was very much unpredictable, as Rapid says there. Uh, but, you know, Frosty, round of applause to you, my friend. Congratulations. That was literally, literally uh, uh, just perfect drive. You can't ask for any more, can you, really? Perfect drive. We do have one more split of racing coming up. Um, what I am going to do is quickly run to the toilet, uh, get a glass of water. Now, the intermission is going to play twice for you, folks. So it'll say three minutes. It's actually six minutes, okay? It's six minutes. Uh, it was a big bottle, Blake, I've got to say. It's going to be a six-minute intermission, so it gives you time to go to the toilet and get a drink. Even though it says three minutes, so just keep that in mind. Um, we're going to jump to that now, and um, literally we will... Uh, have a little bit of a break. I've got 30 minutes.
Chance if you wanna spill your mind Give me all your reasons to why I should take my time Used to have forever but you never cared that much
did it once, but I won't. I won't do that again. Welcome back then. Apologies for the slightly longer delay there. <clears throat> I just needed my voice to rest just for a brief moment. Uh, so the grid walk for this one is going to be very different to what it actually is going to be, of course, because we have got quite a few reserves coming in. We've had a couple of dropouts in the last second there for split number four. <clears throat> so just to give you an idea of reserves in this one, obviously even Stephen had the issue with the TV. So uh, we have Andy Reeves coming in for even Stephen. We also had one dropout earlier on today. Uh, I think that was Max Range. Just to give you an idea here. Yeah, it was Max Range. Uh, so secure, uh, I can't... Where is it? The Sakura Shark is in for Max Range. Uh, and we also have Herm in as well. Uh, so there are three reserves currently in <clears throat> at the moment. Um, we'll just give everybody a brief moment to practice here. Well, I'll go through deliveries again, as we've been doing throughout the evening here. Uh, as we can see, Ronin GT8, who features quite a lot, actually, in terms of the intro. <clears throat> Apologies if my voice goes. So, yeah, Revolution couldn't make it. That's quite right. So, Tuvok is uh, racing in the uh, Nissan uh, GTR Group 3. Sorry, no, it's not. It's the, <laughs> it's the Fuguzi, of course. It's just that livery applied to this car. We then have uh, Herm in... Uh, that's an interesting colour. It's brown. I'm not used to brown machines before. I love the... Uh, on the back. Ready, ready, go. Brown livery there. So we then have Andy Reeves. So Herm and Andy Reeves are two reserve drivers who have come in. So Andy Reeves gets to show off his livery here. The black and the gold. Lovely little livery that. Lovely little livery. Yeah, my, <clears throat> my voice is going a little bit. Uh, we have the McQueen car. There we go. Look, Bazinga, Bazinga's on. Bazinga knows he's on the stream. <laughs> so a big shout out to Bazinga again. Bazinga was the designer of the uh, logo that you can see bottom right inside. The uh, Fugu Frenzy logo. Superb logo. Absolutely superb. Um, look at that. Boom. Yep, the John Player special livery. That's quite right. 95. Uh, we'll jump to... Ooh. Uh, Magic's here. Magic's here. Obviously, it's Sunday for Magic's here. It's not even. It's not even Saturday for Magic's here. It's Sunday. So that's the reason why we run it on a Saturday evening now. Uh, we can do all the splits in one go. Obviously, it's Sunday in Australia. So most people in Australia are work the normal working hours. Same for Asia if they wanted to then race from Asia. I think Asia's the only community or or G part of the GT community we don't have in this um, championship at the moment. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Uh, but even so, I believe that's the case. <clears throat> as uh, Magic here goes through. Yes, GT Alex. Uh, Jean has had it to uh, the, the rear as well, I believe. Uh, we jump to Big Mac now. In a lovely little livery there. 46. Looks like a NASCAR livery. Oh, that is that not the livery they put on their um, prototype car that they were going to bring out? That could be that, actually. Yeah, Magic's had his breakfast already. Hopefully it's Weetabix. Um, who have we not seen? Hansa. Jump to Hansa now. 
Now this is a crack in the boot. See semicolons there as well. We've not had a look at semicolons yet. Bright yellow. I like yellow as a colour. No, not the 400Z. Didn't they do... Um, oh, I can't remember what it was called. There was a Nissan car. It was like a, a very square-based car. You could, it looked like a Lada to some extent. There we go. We get to see the rising sun essentially on the car there. Fugu Frenzy of Hansa. We'll jump to semicolon. In that yellow machine now. And uh, through there we go. No, not the cube. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like the eye something over there. Oh, there we go. Semicolons listening. Semicolons listening. We've got a flash away there. And we got the fish on the side, of course. The fugu. Uh, the Sakura Sharks. This is the uh, another reserve. First reserve, basically. Just missed out on getting in. But that's the thing. If you nail quality and you still make it top reserve, you're more than likely going to get in. Yeah, I like the, uh... Ah, no in-game sound. Apologies, I turned that off before. There you go. You've got it now. Um, as we get the secure shark here. Going round. Thank you for that. Is someone... Yes, we've got them, Richie. So the next person in... So we've got three reserves in here now. Um, we have uh, secure shark. We have Andy Reeves, who's currently in P10 at the moment. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you one livery we haven't seen yet. Um, uh, Illyrians. Uh, I will find that in a second. Where's Illyrian? There we go. So we haven't seen this livery yet. Wonder why it's so quiet. Im said that's in 510. Oh, okay. Cheers, Dan. Thank you that. Thanks very much. So you get to see this. I said there was two gold and white um, cars in this championship. You've seen them both now. So that's, uh, that's actually his business uh, on the side of his car. Nomad's Collection. I think it's Nomad's Collection. Apologies if it's not. Yes, it is. I knew it was. I knew it was. So I believe we've seen everybody's liveries now. Everybody should be in. So what I am going to do... We, of course, have another video. Oi! Tuvok goes off to Nani there. We do have another video, of course. We will be starting the race shortly. Um, so I'll just let you have a look at this next video. Now, remember I said about the liveries and livery competition? We're just going to look at that again. So welcome back. So obviously we do have a livery competition this time. I, I mentioned it earlier on in the stream, but basically uh, if you have entered at least one round as a competitor, you get to enter your livery and there is a prize. You do get a trophy at the end of it. Super Dragon was last year's winner. So if you spotted it in there, it was the Mystery Machine livery. Uh, actually dominated the final um, in terms of the livery competition. So, you know, 
everybody gets a prize in turn. Well, everybody doesn't get a prize actually. Everybody has an opportunity at getting a prize. So um, if you do not know the prizes, there are five prizes. We have the winner of the overall championship, of course. Last year's champion was Jomas. We then have driver of the championship, okay? Now, the driver of the championship, this is the driver who puts in the best performance of the championship. Um, you might go, well, that's the winner, but it's not necessarily that. So this could be somebody, for example, we're at split four now. So let's say we're looking at Hake here, okay? Maybe Hake goes from being split four to split one. Um, it could be somebody who's had bad luck for, throughout the races, but has actually done some superb driving, as we see Bonjo Storm reversing up the straight. Um, It'll be a driver vote, and you can't vote for yourself for obvious reasons. We then have best overtake, and I mean, Zakave's overtake ran outside tonight was amazing, apart from the corner after. <laughs> uh, we then have a delivery competition winner, of course, and then we have Spirit of the Championships. So we've seen good, some good sportsmanship um, this evening, uh, and again, so uh, the, that'll be decided um, uh, with a driver vote, but obviously you can't vote for yourself. Uh, the stewards will nominate a driver in terms of the spirit of the, uh, the, the championship. So there's five trophies on offer in this championship. Obviously, you want to win the, the winner one. That's the best one. And then there's four more, um, which you can win as well. Uh, and and, and if, to be honest, if it, you're on a world tour, Jamas had his presented um, to him by, uh, by me in person. And Gran Turismo, they literally recorded it. Uh, we've never seen the footage since, though. So maybe they got a bit... Um, I don't know, jealous about it. Yes, you do get a trophy. Oh, good to hear, Mikey. Right, so I suppose without further ado, because it's best to get, to get on with the race, let's actually have a look at the grid walk. Now, I do apologise. You're going to have to play around with this a little bit. So, just to give you an idea before we go on it, people not in this grid walk now are Slim Boy, Max Range, and Revolution. So when you see those, just put the next driver up, up a little bit, okay? Um, it's just... Yeah, it is what it is. Yes, there's actual physical trophies. Um, there was four last year. We're now up to five this year. But let's go to that grid walk before we start the actual race. Welcome then to the split four grid walk. On pole position is Slim Boy Fat with Ronin Hake in P2. Uh, row two is Hansa and Big Mac. Row three, Bonjour Storm and Illyrian. Row number four, Max Range and Magic's here with row number five being Semicolon and Revolution. Row six is Tuvok and Bazinga. And finally, row seven is Posey Wave and Hoz Knight. And that is your split four grid. Are you ready then? This is the final race of the evening. This is split four. Are you ready? Or should I say, Greddy? Not ready, Greddy. Uh, but let's see what happens here then. So there's your grid. Three reserves at the back, of course, because that's where they finish in qualifying. As we get ready, Hake on pole position. Obviously, it would have been P2, but now promoted to pole position. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll remember that in the future. Anyway, here we go with the race then. Hake on pole. Any jump starters here? I can't see any. It looks like a good start from Hake, actually. A little bit of wheel spill. Spiel. Spin there from Illyrian as we head towards turn one. Bunjil Storm's had a cracking start here as well. Down the inside of Hansa here as we head towards turn one. Bunjil Storm looking to get the move done and dusted early on. In we go, side by side, and gets it done indeed. Big Max in there as well, and a much cleaner start to split than split three. So nice, oh, a little bit of a wall bash there. Further back, I'm not sure who that was. That would look like Magic's here, actually, as we hit the left-hander for the very first time here of 23, and it's a 27 then, as uh, we hit the right hand. Oh, Illyrian going for a move on the inside of Hansa. What a move that is, what a move. Uh, we'll have a look at that one again. That's, you don't see moves there very often. That is for sure as we head to the right-hander. As uh, Oh, there's a magic here. has gone a bit deep there. Big Max. Oh, Big Max round. Big Max round. What an error that is. Big Max still touched the grass with the rear wheel and has gone round. Oh. No, not happy days there. Magic Tears off again. Magic Tears having a terrible start to this race. Uh, it could be a ping issue, maybe. I don't I don't know. Um, as we continue through there. But they're your top three at the moment. Hansa just dropping back a little bit. That two box involved. Uh, Secure Shark, the first of the reserves there, I believe. Up into P9. Yes, indeed. Semi colon side by side with Hansa here. It's Austria versus Germany as we head towards Turn 1. We've got the Canadian in front as well. Truly global event. Uh, 
Illyrian is Romeo's indeed as we hit the left hander. And uh, semicolon still down the inside. Posse Wave just runs a little bit too wide there. House Knight takes full advantage of that as well. As we then head towards the left hander here. And uh, Hansa keeps that position. After all of that, Hansa keeps that position. Unfortunately, we just lost the drive there. We lost Posse Wave there. Not sure what's happened with this. Uh, but do you know what I want to have a look at? I want to have a look at this move again. Because this is a superb move here. So we're on board now. As we head towards the right hander. So full of, look at that. That that is precision driving. That that is superb. Like full credit there. Full credit with that move because it's not open initially. It opens up. Absolutely opens up. So unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable there. Uh, let's jump a bit further. We've got Bazinga all over the back of the Sakura Shark here. So hopefully we'll see what happens to Magic here at some point. Uh, Magic has had a bit of a terrible start, but uh, still in the race. All 13 drivers uh, who are remaining, of course, we've just lost one driver, uh, are going to be on this start finish right here. Hansa is under all sorts of pressure from Semicolon and Hosnight. Hosnight goes down the inside of both of them here on the uh, start finish straight here, down towards turn one, three wide, in towards the left hander. Hosnight gets the job done and dusted just there. Well played by Hosnight. Up two positions, but Hansa's coming back as well. Going for the cut back here. Still three wide, down to two wide as we head towards the left-hander here. That's going to get a bit sketchy. Oh, Hansa goes too deep here. Hansa goes off. Hansa goes off, but pulls it back. Going to lose a few places. Going to have dirt on the tyres. Bazinga's in the fight here as well. As uh, we come out of that cut. Oh, no. Hansa's gone. Hansa's just span it round. Dirt on the tyres. That's another one. Bites the dust there. Secure a shot down the inside of semicolon. Oh, a little bit of a Constantina effect there. Just a little bit of a tag. So I think Sharks just let semicolon go. Bazinga's let them uh, Shark go as well there. So a nice little bit of sportsmanship between those drivers. Realising the mistake and just letting it go line of stern there. As uh, everybody in the mix here as well. We'll try and have a look at what happened to Hansa there in a bit more. Uh, wow, all the way back down to P13. So yeah, Hansa literally runs too deep here. You can just see that on board. Runs a little bit too deep. And it's going to come out of this corner. And unfortunately, going to lose the rear again. There you go. Just goes. Doesn't catch it in time. Hits the barrier. And ouchie wah, wah Right, let's go to the front. Where Bonjour Storm and all sorts of pressure from Illyrian with Tuvak in there as well. The battle for P2 is seriously on. But Hague's just gone. Haker's gone here. Lyrian down the left. Gets it stopped there. To keep that position for now. So Bonjour Storm from Lyrian. And uh, I'm probably saying that completely wrong. I know I know Romeo's has told me several times about uh, the name, but I always forget the pronunciation. You'll have heard that in the grid walk as well because I was very proud I said it right. Uh, Hosnay, P5, all the way back from P11. So Hosnay up six positions at this point in time. Doing very well here is Hosnay. Very much qualified on the cusp. In fact, it was quite interesting with qualifying. Literally, if you were 117 or under, you uh, got the place. As somebody else has... Uh, who's that? Is that... Oh, Hans has gone again. Hans has just gone again. What happened here? Oh, the grass. The grass again. Oh, ouchie wah wah. Uh, let's go back to Bonjour Storm, though. Here we go. Let's see what's going to uh, happen now with this fight for P2. So, I'm going to just say Illyrian for now. As uh, we head towards the left-hander. I know it's an L to begin with, but I think he did that to a compromise. As you do with Ames, where you put magical numbers and letters in front of it. L's and I's match up as Illyrian goes for the cutback. Not quite working this time, though. As uh, they head towards the left-hander here. Illyrian all over the back of Bonjour Storm. Oh, is there a little bit of contact there? I'm not too sure. That's one to have a look at in the replay, but Bonjour Storm's gone completely off there. Oh, oh, that was tight. Hosnay up to P4 now because of that. And uh, Bonjour Storm going to have semicolon all over the back of him here. We will have a look at the replay there. Possibly we've had a lot of lag, so he left. Fair enough. You know, fair play. That's good sportsmanship there for Posse Wave. If you had a lot of lag, let's stay out of the way there. And, uh, you know, left because of it. Uh, we've got two people quite far back in this race. We'll try and have a look and identify who they are shortly. We know one is Hanza. I'm just not sure who the other one is. But uh, let's have a look at what happened with Bonjour Storm, I think. Oh, no. Semicolon's on the inside. Forget that for the moment. Semicolon down the inside. Oh, a little bit of contact there into the oval. Oh, too wide. Does that work? Oh, no. It's a spin. It's a spin with a Bonjour Storm. Got to try and find reverse there. 
Oh, it's all gone pear shaped P2 to P11. In fact, I think Bonjour Storm might have just left there. Um, that's a little bit frustrating by Bonjour Storm. Just left there. We'll try and have a look at the accident. All the same. I'm not sure whether it'll work now. Um, we'll we'll uh, see if we can. But Tobot's going for the move down the inside here. Big rip indeed. Big rip. Uh, but it's just survives. Can we have replays? We can still have replays. Um, let's go on board here. Oh, a big break there. That's a massive break there, to be fair. Very big break. There's normally a dab of the brakes for that corner, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But I can definitely see why. Oh, we jump straight back to the action. Tumak down the inside here of Illyrian. Down the inside. But not quite got it to uh, work there as we hit the left-hander now. So that corner is a dab, and sometimes you don't even have to dab. But you just drop a gear, so it's quite unusual. That was a very hard braking for that corner. Uh, as we continue now towards the left-hander. And uh, through we go. So I think Tumak's going to be all over the back of Romeo's very quickly here. Very, very quickly. You can see that gap coming down. Two and a half temps. Now to two temps. Now one and a half temps. It's getting closer and closer and closer. And Tubak goes down the inside now. Heading towards turn one here. Tubak going down the inside. Hulsnight's going to love this as well. Because that brings Hulsnight into play here. Oh, the braking under. <laughs> They're squealing or wiggling under braking. But through they go. Tubak with a lovely little defense there as well at the apex. Overtakes and defends on the apex. Superb driving there by Tubak. Superb driving. In fact, a lot of people are braking quite a lot there. That's quite, quite surprising. What happened? We just had a look at it earlier on. Oh, Tomat's gone off! Tomat's gonna have dirt on his tyres here as we head towards the right hander here. And into the braking zone we go. And Illyrian gets it stopped on the apex. Fair play there by Illyrian. Fair play gets it stopped here. And I haven't had a look at any of the other battles here at the moment. Let's jump further back briefly. Let's have a look what's kicking off here. Bazinga semi colon there fighting it. Two Germans at each other here. He did, he got hit from behind. Uh, and then he crashed himself into the barrier, I think. As uh, we continue on, semicolon. Gonna have pressure from Bazinga. Let's jump to the P2 battle because Illyrian's under all sorts of pressure once again from Tuvok here. As we head towards turn one, and Tuvok gets the car stopped. A little bit of contact there, but that's all fine, I believe. And through we go, and Hosnight is really coming into play now. Hosnight is really coming into play here. So this is going to be a three-way fight for that P2 position. Hosnight will be really happy with this performance, though. Oh, Tumok's gone! Where's Tumok gone? Oh, no, no, no. Tumok has gone, so Hosnight up into P3. Going to be all over the back of Illyrian here as we head towards the hairpin. And uh, is Hosnight going to go for the move? No, and I'm worrying about my voice here because every time I go to speak, it likes to stop speaking. As so we continue through here, let's have a look at what happened to Tumok. We're going to have to go on board for this, I think, just to get an idea. As uh, we continue on now. Oh, this carried too much speed, turned in a bit too early, and that was the end of that one for Tubok. So, going to be under all sorts of pressure from Semicolon now. Bazinga's still in P6 there. Magic's here in P7. So, Magic's here. The race is coming back to Magic's here because it really did drop off initially. And it is coming back now. Uh, further back, we have Big Mac racing the Sakura Shark. And Andy Reeves is in there as well. Now, who are the two further back here? Just quickly, we've got Herm and Hansa. So with those people leaving, uh, obviously Hansa gains more points. So happy days for Hansa. As we head towards the left here, Big Mac on the inside of the Sakura Shark. Oh, what a beautiful cutback. Could you ask for a better cutback there? What a superb move by the Sakura Shark. Lovely little cutback. That is exactly what you're after here. And uh, through Shark goes up into P8. Congratulations there for Shark. So let's jump back to that P2 battle, which is uh, spread out a little bit here now. Illyrian up in P2 has uh, extended the gap to Hells Knight here. It's 1.1 seconds. Uh, Hake's just gone for it here. We've not really looked at Hake at all in this entire race. Actually at all. So we're going to jump to this P4 battle now. Ooh, a bit of frame lag there. I'm not sure what's going on there. As uh, we continue through. 
and uh, head towards the oval once again. Through the left hander we go. And Tort's going to have a big gap there too. It's semicolon. Actually, going to be no action there. Oh, we do have action here though. Shark and Big Mac once again. Through the left hander onto the start finish straight. It's Shark and Big Mac here. Now, Big Mac, is he close enough? Not quite, I don't think, to make a move. See what happens, though. Obviously, if they get the break in all sorts of wrong into this turn one. No, all fine and dandy there. So they continue on racing. Oh, Big Mac looking for a little bit of an overlap. Not going to quite work here. Not going to quite work. So let's jump to that P5 battle here. Semicolon, Bazinga. Now it's still a little bit of a gap between them all. So let's jump back to that... Uh, Battle with Shark and Big Mac. Shark went defensive there. Oh, Magic's here's gone. Oh, another one bites the dust. We're getting a lot of victims in this race. That is for sure. As another one bites the dust. Big Mac goes for the move down the inside as well. Guess he stopped. Oh, what a beautiful move. We broke a little bit late though. Shark coming back at Big Mac. Lovely little bit of racing from these drivers here. As we continue into the left, Big Mac still <laughs> keeping that position for now. Shark just ran a little bit wide there. Right, so now we need to go to Magic's here. Oh, Herm, we just jumped to Herm. Herm's off again. That's unfortunate. Oh, control it. Control it, Herm. And off we go here. So uh, we need to get to Magic's here now. Let's have a look at what happened to Magic's here. So coming through here, the left hand. There we just see a plane go above there as well. Into the right. That's a very tight line for the right. Yeah. Yeah, just too wide. Tries to accelerate through it. Not going to quite work. Game over. And we jump to Hosnight all over the back of Illyrian here. My word, that was a quick jump back as uh, through the left-hander we go. A lot of victims at turn four. It's the most dangerous because literally if you get your... Oh, just like that. Oh, 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 oh. Titch make funny noises. Titch make funny noises because if you do what Hosnight does but a little bit more, you're off into the barrier basically. Uh, it's a, kind of a funky part of GT's physics as uh, we then come through here. So Illyrian just keeps that position for now. Bazinga has overtaken semicolon in all of this. So Bazinga up into P5. I'm not sure where that happened. As we head towards the left handers. Bazinga moving up the grid as well. Good to see. Yeah, it's so easy to do here. And you lose so much because the racing is so close. It really is. As we head towards the left hander here. And uh, Bazinga keeps that position for now. Semicolon is gaining though. Uh, ooh, no, no, he's not gaining. It's roughly the same there. Let's jump to P2 though. Illyrian and Hell's Knight, here we go. I don't know what just happened then, I just heard a pop. Which wasn't a very good sound. Hopefully that's not my ear just going. Uh, but in towards the left we go, barrier hit there for Hell's Knight. As uh, we come through the left-hander here. And uh, Illyrian stays in that P2 for now. Hell's Knight in P3. Tuvok, Tuvok on his own at the moment. We'll be hoping that the fighting continues up ahead. Oh, in fact, gains a load of time there through there with their fighting. Which is exactly what he's after. And then Tuvok can get involved as well. Yeah, exactly, Jedi Jonah. Exactly. So we're halfway through this race. This race has gone quick as well. Blimey heck. These races go so fast. The half an hour races and they just go like anybody's business. Uh, if you do have any questions, want to join the championship, uh, do check out the description. Or if you've got a question, fire away in chat, of course. There's lots of people in chat who can help. Lots of competitors in chat as well. But uh, yes, what a fantastic event we have had here today so far. We're still going, of course. We have 11 laps to go as uh, we come through here now. Illyrian just gets that slightly bit wrong. Also, that's going to be all over the back of Illyrian here, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a move on here, heading towards turn one. Illyrian goes very tight here. Hosnight going to go around the outside. Hosnight up into P2, I feel, here. There we go. Jobs are good, but Illyrian staying down on the inside. Oh, a little bit of a barrier touch there. Just misjudged that a little bit. I think led off then to... Uh, Give it back a little bit, but they go into turn one, side by side. Round they go. How's oh, around the outside? Guess the move done there up into P2. Uh, can I join Mini Madness? Yes, it was last year. Uh, speaking of uh, gaps, by the way, that I was talking about earlier on, Tuvok. Tuvok is now a second off here, 1.2 seconds. So in the slipstream, going to get involved. We're going to have a three-way fight. Oh, hey, Hell's Knight, don't do that. That's very scary stuff. Uh, we're going to have a three-way fight for that P2 position. Further back, we've got Bazinga and... Oh, Bazinga gets it all sorts of wrong. That's going to give Semicolon a little bit of a move there as we head towards the hairpin, the right-hander here. Semicolon down the inside. Going to get that job done there. Oh, went a bit deep, though. Bazinga comes back at him. 
And they're going to head towards the left here. Semicolon, still on the inside. I think that's job done now, for now anyway. These two have been fighting the entire race. I'm sure they'll be happy with a fight like this because it's good to have a good scrap like this. Good, clean scrap. Um, and through we go. If only Polyphony made race A a bit more like this. Yes, it would be good. Uh, but we're going to stay on this fight at the moment. P2 battles just a bit more spread out. But Bazinga, semicolon. They're neck and neck here with Slipstream as well. Bazinga's looking and thinking which way to go here. Bazinga, bumper draft maybe? I don't know. I couldn't see. Um, is playing it smart maybe? Because he realised Big Mac and Shark are behind? I don't know, that seemed very, very smart, but uh, Shark still on the inside there, Bazinga around the outside. I think there's some team play going on there, but Shark's having none of it. Uh, so shark, semicolon, why am I calling him Shark suddenly? Semicolon, I've lost the plot. Shark is on his way towards this battle with Big Mac. It's a through the right hander we go, so semicolon keeps that position for Bazinga. Big Mac is in that slipstream now, and Shark is gonna be in there as well. Right, P2. Hosnight has gained the position back there and I've completely missed it. It's a big chunk of uh, time as well from Hosnight. I wonder if we can see it on the replay. Oh, Romeos. All sorts of sideways. That's where a lot of the time was lost. All sorts of sideways. But uh, I think that fight is going to continue on there for P2 with uh, Hake. 10.3 seconds in the distance there. There's Hake for you. Dominating this split, absolutely dominating. Into turn one we go. Hates practice quite a lot for this, I believe. So uh, you know, fair play. Practice does make perfect. As uh, we get a bit of a frame drop there. Thank you, um, Grand Trismo, for that one. So semicolon still leading this battle for P5 from Bazinga and Big Mac. It's turn one we go again. A little bit boasty. You can see how the car floats a little bit here. Um, it's it's a, car, it, a car you can control the drift with. But when it goes, it gets a lot harder to catch it. Um, through the left we go. We're not using the uh, balance of performance either. We're using our own bop here. It's 95% power, 90% weight, I believe it is, from memory. Or the other way around, but I'm pretty sure it's that way around. All that information is in the description um, in terms of the PDF below. Yes, it, it's brilliant fun, this track. It, it just offers some fantastic racing. Obviously, there's been some contacts. We've had uh, one rage quit, and um, yeah, that's been it. So it's been nice that we've ha only had one rage quit. I don't really like rage quitting personally. Uh, I always see it that you should always continue on because you can always get points. You can always come back. You have no idea what's going to happen in a race. Obviously, with a report now, we can only report from the start of the race um, up to that point, basically. But we continue on here. Host Knight's built that gap up 1.6 seconds now. That's the slipstream gone for Illyrian. So Hosnight has gone from P, uh, what is it, 14, 13, 12, P11 to P2 now. That's, I mean, that's one of the biggest jumps of the day, actually, for Hosnight, isn't it? I don't even think Ryan made that many positions. So Hosnight really, really coming up trumps here in terms of uh, race performance at the moment. And so through they go. Right, let's jump to that um, P5 battle here. We've got Semicolon, we've got Bazinga, and we've got Big Mac all in here. Semicolon runs a little bit wide there. Comes back on a lovely line, though. So that sets him up beautifully for that right-hander, actually, as Bazinga just struggles a little bit more there. Uh, yes, you also have to make sure you are on Discord. Discord is where we chat all sorts of stuff. It's very worthwhile joining. Uh, you can also type exclamation mark CC for some more information as well. That should happen in chat. If someone wants to try it, fire away. As we come through the left-hander now. I can tell my voice is going a little bit. Oh, let's jump to P3 battle because Tuvok has just overtaken Illyrian. In all of that, that gap is ever increasing as well. Let's just have a look, see if we can spot what happened here. Down the inside at the left-hander here. Tuvok got the move done there. Beautiful move, actually. Stayed very tight as well. Beautiful move. Uh, as they then head towards the left. So how did Illyrian lose so much speed? I'm going to guess. Hit the barrier. No, had to slow up to stop hitting the barrier there. That makes perfect sense. Uh, semicolon Bazinga. They're still at it here. Heading towards the left-hander. And uh, Big Match dropped off a little bit. Semicolon drifting. Bazinga drifting as well. Through the left-hander they go. Okay, well, the pleb one works. The CC one... Oh, yeah, it does work above. Thank you for whoever tried that. Uh, through we go. And then into the right-hander. Semicolor still leading Bazinga there for this P5 spot. Oh! Tail was a bit wiggly there. 
as we head towards the right hander once again. We do have a battle further back here. I think it's P11. Nope, P10. It's Magic's here. Oh, Andy Reeves has just gone off there. We just missed that. We literally just missed that. We'll see if we can catch a quick replay of that one. What happened to Andy Reeves here? So Andy Reeves comes towards his left hander here. I think mean, he's got dirt on his tyres, which is a bit of the problem. Yeah, 100% dirt on the tyres. Just understeers off there. Andy Reeves was a reserve though, so I imagine that he's not practised as much as maybe some of the other people have practised. Uh, through we go. Semicolon still leading Bazinga there. P5 battle. In terms of the P... We're gonna, we could have lap traffic here, actually. Uh, P3 battle. Tuvok still leads Illyrian. We head towards the left hander. It's not a lap 18 now. Ooh, wow, I thought it, I, that, that was just camera perception there. I thought Illyrium was uh, drifting into Tuvok. That wasn't actually happening there. So, Hake is there, and we do have lap traffic. This is the first time we'll have lap traffic tonight. Practice. What's that exactly? Well played, Slim Boy, in the race again on your race. Uh, my word, you profited massively from jumping up to the next split, which is what the opportunity is there for. It's literally the perfect example. Uh, well, we're getting back to this battle because I just noticed it on the map. Semicolon and Bazinga, so close. These guys have been battling the entire race. It has been absolutely fantastic as Bazinga goes down the inside. Not quite this time, not quite. Semicolon gave lots of space, though, to Bazinga. And uh, through they go. Absolutely fantastic to see. And they head towards the double apex hairpin here, the left-hander. Now, what we saw from, I think it was... Uh, Sleeper, Slipper, um, earlier was a good exit there. Actually made a very good difference in terms of this start-finish straight. Now, uh, oh, the gap between Illyrian and Tuvok has actually gone up massively there. So Illyrian's had a bit of an issue somewhere. So this is the closest battle on circuit. We'll keep an eye out on the lap traffic as well. They're racing pretty fair. They are indeed racing pretty fair. Sorry for that frame drop then. I just noticed that on my own YouTube. Uh, we had a little bit of a frame drop, but nothing major. As we continue towards the left-hander. This is what we like to see, though. Racing fair. Oh, Bazinga gets all sorts of sideways again through that corner. But this is what you like to see in terms of the racing. You know, good fair racing. We've seen it throughout the night. Magic Tears had a huge crash. Let's see if we can uh, have a look. Wow, we have a massive crash here for Magic Tear. What's happened here, then? Oh, we just caught the end of it. So, it must have hit the barrier with dirty tyres, just lost the rear and gone completely around there as Magic's hit. Oh, and done donuts as well. <laughs> Can't get it started. It's very hard to get it started on a Noble. But yeah, big, big accent there for Magic's here. So, there you see Hansa is up into P10 now. Remember, Hansa had two massive accidents earlier on. And up into P10. That's why I always say never leave. Never leave. In fact, what is P10 in terms of points? I'm curious. Now, P10 is uh, 14, 13, 11, 10. 11 points! And you get three for finishing last. So, you know, that's what you get if you actually finish the race. Through we go, the left-hander. We've got semicolon, Bazinga, and Big Mac. They're still racing hard here. Three-way fight for this fifth position. Clean but hard, exactly. That's what we like to see here. So, semicolon going a little bit defensive here now. Bazinga looking, trying to get the move done. Going to try around the outside. Big Mac could capitalise here. Try and go for a cutback on Bazinga, potentially. Tries to go for the move there. You see the wiggle on the car there. Uh, Bazinga around the outside on semicolon. Is this going to work? Surely not. As we head towards the left hand. We did see Blake try this earlier. Did succeed, but then plebbed this a little bit, unfortunately, for, for Blake. Uh, a little bit of contact there between Bazinga and Big Mac, but that's all good. That That's just a little bit of tiny contact. Nothing major at all. You would see that in real life. Through we go, and Bazinga just loses the rear a little bit here. And uh, what have we got here? We've got the battle for P2. Tuvok has caught up to Hosnight. How has that happened? I'm not sure, but Tuvok has really caught up to Hosnight in all of this. Uh, Hakes just lapped somebody. Let's go back to that battle for P5. Uh, we've got Semicolon, Bazinga, Big Mac, and they're still line of stern through there. Bazinga gets a little bit of oversteer there. We'll see if anybody hits the barrier, and then we'll jump to that P2 battle. It's all livening up towards the end of this race once again. Through there we go. Nobody hits the barrier. Let's jump to that P2 battle. Uh, Hosnight and Tuvok. Let's see if we've got a replay of any action here. So I think Tuvok's just been catching throughout the, uh, f throughout the stint here. So Hasnight's got a bit of a hard time at the end there. Uh, I think the uh, bat marker was actually letting um, 
Hate go as well in all that. Oh, here we go. Three wide turn number one. Big Max on the inside. Big Big Max gained two position from this position. Goes for the cutback. Gets it done. Big Max going to have do on his tyres. Semicolon comes back at Big Max now as well. As they head now towards this left hand. Big Max going to have to be very careful. And uh, is indeed. Look at that. You can see how much you run wide there with the dirty tyres. Very nice of home indeed. Very good sportsmanship. Oh, Big Mac, you're losing out here. Calm it down. You're going to have to do it on your tyres again. But semicolon going to be coming hard at Bazinga, I think, as we head towards the end of this race now. In towards the hairpin. Bazinga gets it stopped. Bazinga up to P5 then. Semicolon P6. Big Mac in P7. Now we've got the battle for P2 as well. Hosnite and Tuvok. Hosnite scrapes the barrier there. Tuvok's going to go on the inside. Is this a strategic call, though? Is this strategic by Hosnite? Who knows? Hosnite tried to come back down for the slipstream. That's not going to work. But Hosnite, because he went around the outside at the top of the oval, going to carry more speed there. Hosnite down towards the start finish line. Oh, look how close it is. This is unbelievably close as they head towards the left hander. We start the penultimate lap now as well. Hosnite on the outside. Tuvok on the inside. Tuvok stops it early. Hosnite tries to go around the outside. Doesn't quite work. Goes for the cutback here. Is it going to work? That's a very, very big cutback, but I'm not sure it's going to work. No, not for now. We drove to Bazinga semicolon. They're still at it here on the penultimate lap into the left hander we go. Big Max dropped off a little bit with the dirty tyres. Oh, Bazinga runs a little bit wide there. That's bringing Semicolon back into the mix here. Semicolon on the inside of Bazinga as they head towards the left. Oh, lovely driving. Look at this side-by-side -side action with these drivers. Superb racing. Bazinga just going to keep that position for now. As they head into the right-hander. Through they go. Semicolon looking for the cutback here potentially. Not going to quite work. Uh, it, oh, it could work now. Tubox just gained a position from um, Hosnight, I think. Or did Hosnight? I can't even remember now. It's all kicking off on this last. <laughs> on the penultimate lap. Um, here we go. Right round. Uh, in towards the left. And oh, that was semicolon running a bit deep there. Going to be on the marbles. Big Mac comes back. Oh, there's contact there. There's contact. I imagine Big Mac. Yeah, look at that. Big Mac is going to give that straight back up, I imagine. Um, 100%. So it's going to give Shark the opportunity as well. So we'll see what happens here with that one. Right, let's jump towards. This battle. Now, did um, was Tubak ahead? I can't remember. Yes, it was. Right, okay. Battle for the ages. It was indeed. Right, let's go to that P7 now. So, Sharks jumped semicolon in all of this. Um, Big Mac is still ahead. So, maybe Big Mac doesn't think it's his fault. I don't know. I don't know the answer to the question either. Um, as we come in to this left-hander for the final time here. Um, I need to get an idea where Hake is on the circuit. So, Hake is near the end now. Ten seconds up the road. Um, so where is the nearest battle? It's this battle. It's this battle here, isn't it? It's Shark, Semicolon, and Big Mac. I think what we'll do, we'll jump to the leader then. And Ronan GT Hake is going to be a race winner for split number four. As he comes around the last corner for the final time. Flashing lights already. Going to be very happy with this, I imagine. Lights to flag finish, basically. Nice and easy. Flashing the lights there. Ronan GT Hake is going to be a race winner for split four. What a cracking race perfect race for Ronan GT Hake there crosses the line with a lovely little oversteer moment and Tuak gonna come home in P2 had a little bit of a struggle at the uh, sort of quarter of part of the race but has come back strong there towards the end fair play to Tuvok. Uh Hosnite is P3 spins across the line as well uh, Illyrian P number four there uh, P5 for Bazinga Bazinga will be very happy with that had a fantastic race um, throughout this race. We did get 150 likes. Thank you, everybody, for those likes. Very much appreciated. I'm hoping you've enjoyed this. P6 for Big Mac. P7 for Shark. P8 for Semicolon. Shark, actually, the highest of the reserve drivers, so shout out for that one. And Reeves, another uh, reserve driver here. Coming home in P9 after all of that, so we'll be very happy with that, I imagine. Uh, as we see Andy Reeves come round there towards the end now. So P9 for Andy Reeves. Give us a flash there. And then we have Hansa in P10. You know, shout out to Hansa for staying for the race. We then have P11 for Magic's hit. We're quickly going to jump to Herm because Herm has already finished. Unfortunately, got a lap there. But, um, wow, even Magic's hit has finished as well. So, there are your 12 finishers. What a fantastic, fantastic race again. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant. I thank every driver, every person who's watched this. It's been unbelievable. Let's have a look at your provisional race results. Again, I imagine this is going to be looked at. I imagine there will be a report in there somewhere. But in terms of your provisional race results, it is Hake, Tuvok, Hothnight. They are podium finishers. 
followed by Illyrian, Bazinga, Big Mac, The Sakura Shark, Semicolon, Andy Reeves, Hansa, Magic's here, and Herm. They are your 12 final finishers in split number four. We've had four races tonight, four fantastic, fantastic races. Uh, it's been brilliant, brilliant fun. I say I hope you've enjoyed it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the new graphics. There's a lot more to come in terms of this, in terms of the show. Uh, I hope you guys and drivers continue to put on the show of racing. It's been brilliant today. Been absolutely fantastic. And uh, yes, guys, girls, that is it for this evening in terms of Fugu Frenzy. What a round one. That is all I can say. What a round one. As I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much, GT Plus Racing, for that awesome rating. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. As I say, I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, and I will be seeing you hopefully soon uh, in round number two. Remember, check out the description if you want to race. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video or live stream very, very, very soon. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen.